Hello? Hi, is this Pamela? Yes. Hi, this is David from AT&T. Yes. It, it seems like um, there's a problem on your phone bill. Like, it looks like you've been making a lot of 1-900 number calls to phone sex lines, and you're currently... I don't believe so. Oh, no, it's definitely... It shows here on the computer, and you're over uh, $3,000 for this month so far. So. Well, you know what? Uh, my husband has been in the hospital for this for some time now. Oh. Uh, a friend has been helping me oh. with my bill. You might want to look um, at that friend really he, closely. He, I'm sorry, but he he's not here today. Uh, he will be in at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Oh, maybe, maybe if you had his number, I could give him a call. Uh, I have his cell. Okay. Uh, oh, wait a second. Um... Are you sure it's not you though making all these these? Phone, I don't. Phone? I hate the phone. I don't make these phone calls. Yeah, but you know the phone sex lines. Eight hundred or nine one eight hundred. No one uh, one nine hundred. I don't know what nine hundred is. Oh, what is well, nine? that's the number that you keep calling to to call I, phone sex. I don't sex? do it. I I don't do it. I don't pick up the phone. I check my messages. That's all. And uh, and then you call phone sex. Who? What? And, and then you call phone sex. One nine hundred numbers. Now I don't know what that is. You don't know what phone sex is? No. Oh, here I'll teach you. All right, <laughs> here we go. Um, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> uh, well, um, a number of things. Are you wearing uh, knickers? Am I wearing sneakers? Uh, uh, yeah, sneakers. Are you wearing sneakers? No. I really like sneakers. No. Oh, what, why are we doing this stupid thing? Oh, I was trying to uh, teach you what, what you need to do. Uh, I'm trying. Either to... I need to have my uh, uh, personal assistant, as he calls himself. Uh, oh, call that's so you. fancy! Like, I'm you just, sorry. Do you just laugh at him? And be like, oh, come on! You're you're my you're my freaking maid. You're not a personal assistant. You're my maid. You're my bitch boy. <laughs> that's what you ought to say to that guy. Personal. I, I, I'm sorry. I, what? I don't listen, sir. I really, honestly, I'm not a cheat and I'm not a liar. Oh no, and no I, I would never don't suggest know that. what you're talking about. It's, so uh, if you would like this person's cell number, I'll switch the light on. Oh, this is such a bad uh, idea. I, I really don't know what's going on here. I honestly don't know. My husband got out of the hospital on Saturday. And um, where where is he uh, now? Then he's, he's back uh, in the hospital. And he, my assistant, had been paying all the bills. Now, my assistant's name is Bob. Okay. Okay, and here is his cell. Um, oh. Two one seven seven five. You, you know, now I can't put the the show up on Mixler in, in the show reel. What is a show reel? Oh, I don't know. So, um, well, I don't know either. I honestly, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Well, you're, you know what? You're you're so nice that I'm just going to take all these charges off your bill for all these phone sex numbers you've been calling. I have uh, not been calling them. Oh well, no, it's okay. I don't know what nine hundred is. I hate the telephone. It's, I don't know how to use a computer. It's phone sex. Where, where, like, people call you and they ask if you're wearing pumas? Well, oh, phone sex? Yeah. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm just not very... Oh, you're uh, doing phone sex? I'm not very good at it. Well, I, well, let's give it a shot. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, you start. This is phone, phone sex. Yeah, you start. No, listen... Uh, Really? Is this a practical joke? Oh no, no, not at all. No, I'm I'm calling from AT and T. Just we noticed all the charges on your bill, and we. we but were... I but I haven't. I have. <laughs> I haven't. Listen, maybe you can call Bob and have gay phone sex. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, you, you hey, he's, that's good. You that's think good. You think he will? Um, well, that's interesting. That's a new experience for me. Phone sex. Yeah. Well, I hope it was good for you. So what you know, are the you whole, wearing? The whole sneaker thing. I'm not what wearing. What are you wearing? I'm not wearing any sneakers. 
Uh, I'm wearing a, a no. What do, you, do you have a thing for sneakers? Yeah, I'm, uh, mostly pumas. <laughs> I'm wearing an Obey the Cactus T-shirt right now, and nothing else. <laughs> it's an How oversized T-shirt. How old are you? I'm 41. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm old enough to be your mother. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Some people like that, I hear. Am I making your, your knickers moist? No. Oh, darn it. No, uh, no, not at all. But you're making me laugh a lot. I, <laughs> find, I think this is very funny. Well, that's good. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, okay, say well, what? I said I'm glad to hear it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to type, I'm going to remove all of these charges from your bill. Because it doesn't sound like, I mean, obviously, you don't know how to have phone sex. You try. No, I obviously don't. Why don't you wait till my husband gets home from the AA meeting, and then you guys can do it. Okay. Well, what time is this AA, is AA meeting over? <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thanks. And listen, is that 900 thing, uh, is that a, a, a code for... Oh. Someone wanting to have phone sex? No, no, it's a phone number, like one nine zero zero. I don't zero. believe it. No, 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 no. Oh, no. you don't believe that part? Okay. No, no, I don't believe. It. No, yeah, I wouldn't anyway. either. Anyway, what an interesting way to spend a Monday afternoon. And uh, do you believe? Do you really believe that I'm old enough to be your mother? Oh, yeah, I totally believe that. You sound really old. I do. Uh huh. Oh, I'm going to hang up on you now. Good. Hang up. See if I care. <laughs> hang up on you. You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Here on Frank Call Nation. We'll call landlords and customers. Causing massive aggravation. So he's not a hobo. He is your host. He drinks for loco with his jelly and... everybody you're listening to the snowplow show this is episode 452 and it's sponsored by sean l thank you sean l for being a supporter of the show on the patreon just like everybody else listening is contractually obligated to do after enjoying three episodes you are required to sign up on the patreon and thank you all you new supporters on the patreon who have enjoyed three episodes or more including cody s darren m jeff g brandon y michael j Carson W and Astropath Relay. He has the coolest name of all of you. Today you get to hear a live show that happened earlier this morning, or I guess this afternoon. It went on for about three and a half hours, and I managed to get it edited down to two hours and I think 15 minutes. So you're saving a little bit of time at least by missing the live show that happened earlier today. Congratulations on that. Before we get started with that, I have one single announcement, and that is about the Kickstarter. It is about to end. And holy fucking shit, it's up to $3,100 now with 157 backers. A few days ago, it was up to 2400 or 2500 And I looked on my updates on Kickstarter, because I didn't expect it to get up this high, is the problem. I didn't think it would get up to $2,500. And on my stretch goals that I listed out, I said that at $2,500, I would get Snowplow Show coins in addition to the PLA 2018 coins. And that I would be doing that instead of getting the lapel pins. I wanted to get these metal pins with the PLA logo on them. You know, the little pin things you put on a jacket or a hat or whatever. Put it on your fishing cap. But here's the thing about snowplow show coins and lapel pins. Because I can only do a limited number of either of those, I'm only going to be giving them to Kickstarter people. And if there's any left over, then I'll give them to some of the Patreon people. But not very many. I won't be selling snowplow show coins at all or lapel pins. And because it's gotten up to $3,000, that was the stretch goal that said I will probably get snowplow show coins and lapel pins. So I am spending every penny of this money on snowplow show coins, PLA coins, and lapel pins. And I'm very sorry, Patreon supporters. I wish I could give all of you a lapel pin and a snowplow show coin. And I could do that if the Kickstarter gets up to like $4,000 or something, or probably $35. I, I don't know exactly. I'm all confused about the money at this point. 
everything keeps being more expensive than I expected. But anyway, that is the problem here. If you are not a Kickstarter supporter, you might not get a Snowplow Show coin, and you might not get a lapel pin, but you will get a PLA 2018 coin. A lot of you, anyway. I was going to do everyone that's supported at least $1,000 over the years on the Patreon. So if you need a Snowplow Show coin and a lapel pin, Patreon people, it's just $10 on the Kickstarter if you want to support that, and you will get one. If you're one of the higher level supporters on Patreon, you'll probably get one anyway, but I can't really tell you where the cutoff's going to be because I don't know how many more backers we're going to have over the next few days. I guess there's like three days left to go. And I wish I could have gotten a show out earlier this week to give you guys more warning about this. But now is a good time to support the Kickstarter if you really want to get one of those Snowplow Show coins. Which, by the way, still haven't been designed yet. I set up a thread on the Facebook group where people could suggest uh, quotes and stuff to throw on the coin. Probably the front of the coin is going to be the PLA logo, just like the PLA coin. Only it's going to say the Snowplow Show up on top instead of Phone Losers of America. We'll put some kind of a snowplow show quote on the bottom. And who knows what's going to happen on the back. If you'd like to suggest anything in the comments, feel free to do that. People are saying there should be a picture of a cactus on the back or a picture of a go cup. Or how about a go cup with a cactus on it? I don't know. We'll figure out something, hopefully. Also, a lot of people have been asking, where do I put in my address on the Kickstarter for you to send me my coin? And I figured this out just recently. When the Kickstarter ends, it's going to let me send out questionnaires to everybody who supported the Kickstarter. And the questionnaire will ask you for your name and your address, all that stuff. And it will ask you what kind of metal you want me to send you. Because there's going to be different kinds of metal on the coins, like silver and bronze and copper and gold. And I'll probably set it up so you can do a first choice and then a second choice in case we run out of the type of metal that you want. So I think that covers everything on the Kickstarter. I hope all of that makes sense. I will be getting rid of all of the Snowplow Show coins when they arrive to all of the Kickstarter people. And then whatever's left over, that goes to the Patreon people. Same with the lapel pins. But I will probably order more of both of those next year when I do coins again. I'll be better prepared next year with all of this stuff since I'll know how it all works next year. Okay, that's it, I think. Here is the live show, all two hours and 15 minutes of it. Enjoy. Mr. Pahorsky? Hi everyone in the chat room. I forgot to tweet this show today, so whatever. I guess uh, there's going to be less people here today. There's only 66 in the Mixler. Oh, I'm sorry. Mob7 wants me to keep playing music. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to music, everyone. Here, here's some more music for you. Let's see... Did you drive a car today to work? Do you drive a car? What time are you off work today? Nancy? This is uh, John from the corporate office with 7-Eleven. And I need a ride. And I need a ride. No, I am. I'm from the corporate office with 7-Eleven and I need to borrow your car. Did you drive a car today? Do you have a car there? And I need to borrow your car. I want you to have the keys out and ready when I get there because I don't have all day. I'm not going to just sit around and talk to you about it. I'm from the 7-Eleven corporate office and I need to borrow your car, Nancy. I'm your boss. Just a minute and I'm going to get the keys from you. You don't have a choice. Nancy. You need to stop lying to the corporate office. I'm your boss. I just need to go over to the bowling alley. Nancy. It's only going to be for like 20 minutes. I'm I'm not taking your car. I'm just going to borrow it. I'm just borrowing it. No, I am. I'm from the corporate office with 7-Eleven, and I need to borrow your car. Did you drive a car today? Do you have a car there? And I need to borrow your car. I want you to have the keys out and ready when I get there, because I don't have all day. I'm not going to just sit around and talk to you about it. 
I'm from the 7-Eleven corporate office, and I need to borrow your car. That's what we should do today. We should do corporate favors. We should just call up random companies, say we're with the corporate office, and ask for unreasonable things. Be like, I want you to babysit my dog for just an hour. Just going to leave him there in the store. It's no big deal. It's okay. I'm with the corporate office. What I say goes. Uh, I got this list here from Max Power back in February. He sent me a list of um, realtors, or sorry, realtors, not realtors, realtors. I learned that from Santa Clarita Diet yesterday. It's not called realtor. It's called a realtor. There's no A in it. Well, I mean, there's no A after the L. Anyway, he sent me this list of realtors, and uh, every single one of them is named Nancy. I mean, no, 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 sorry. I've like got that song in my head. Uh, every single one of them is named Natalie. So wouldn't it be fun to call up this big list of Natalies and, and serenade them? Natalie, Natalie, I'd love to do you vaginally. I'll wait until we actually meet. And that is when you'll go down on me. I really hated Mars yeah, attack. I, I don't know, like... It's, I, I, I don't want to do a whole show of this. It's like 30 people, 30, 30 realtors here. Yeah, let's, let's just call the first one and see what happens, I guess. This isn't as weird as I Regret Jumping's list. He sent me a list of... Uh, here, let's go back and look. I Regret Jumping's painfully put together liquor list. And I don't know what to do with this list. He put together a list that, of liquor stores that has weird names. Cowboy's Liquor, Richard's Liquor... Love Child Liquor, Big Cat Liquor. Uh, I don't know. Why am I reading this? Let me go back to my Natalie list. I'm just comparing the weirdness of lists here. What the hell? I regret jumping. What What am I supposed to do with this? I don't know. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to... Oh, wait. i got to resize a window here. It's too big. Yeah, I'm going to call a couple of these Natalies. Like, what do I say to a realtor, though? Like, oh, I, I want to buy a house. By the way, here's a song for you. Like, seriously, how do I Thank do this? Thank you for calling... Realty. Realty, this is Agent Andy. What can I do for you? Hey, is Natalie around? Natalie? Yeah. I do not believe so. Oh, where is she? That's a good question. Do you have a last name? Maybe I can give you your number. Uh, Cap Capley. C K A P L E. K A P L E. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Yeah. What was Matthew's that? Calling? What What did you say? Ish, ish, ish. You shish. Oh no no no! I was <laughs> singing to myself. Um, you're singing to yourself. What song? Yeah. What song? May, may I ask who's speaking? Oh, this is Brad Carter. Brad Carter. Yep. Okay. And are you a client of hers, or? I'm gonna be, if you know what I mean. Oh. Uh, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. So what's that number? Okay. Are you not able to find it on HAR or anything like that? No, like Max Power just sent me this big list of Natalie's. And uh, this is the number he gave me for her. Who did? Max Power. He's a listener of mine. Okay. And are you looking to buy or? Yep. I see. You're going to buy something, if you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hopefully a house, right? Yeah. Yeah. A, a house. Yeah. A quote, house, unquote. Because that's what she does with the real estate. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Well, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, you're able to find this stuff on HAR, so I'll go ahead and I'll let you look at it on there. Oh, no, you said you're getting really... the number after you said no, that song. No, I, I definitely was, but I really don't feel like your uh, your intentions are what they should be to find the number. So if you can't find it on HAR, then I really do appreciate what, your business. What makes but... you say that? Like, why do you think that about me? What, what the hell? I'm sorry? What, why, why are you, like, not trusting me? This doesn't make sense. You were getting the it's number for me. It's not I'm not trusting you, sir. It's that I don't feel like your behavior is appropriate for what I should be handing out this information for. So what do you mean, not you appropriate? Publicly anyway. But I really do appreciate your business. So if you're not able to find her on HAR, then I don't know that she would want your business either. Hey, in your opinion, well, wow, wow, that was rude. Hey, in your opinion, um, how is it pronounced? Realty or reality? Or is it like, a, can it be either? Is it a regional thing? Well, it can be either, or it can be either. Everyone understands both of them. Do you pronounce it either or either, or can it be either? 
whichever one you want. Okay. You're kind but of, I really do appreciate it. You have a great day. All right. Kind of a turd. All right. Bye bye. Bye. All right. I messed that one up. Next on the list is uh, Natalie. What did I do? Like, why did he not trust me? I don't get it. He was getting the number. He probably found it. He probably had it right there and then wouldn't give it to me. How do you reach Natalie Sacco with Old Forge Realty? I'm unable to take your call at this time. Okay. Probably not picking up because I'm from out of area. All these are in different area codes. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Oh, max power. Come on. Seriously, though, what do I do once I reach a Natalie? Send your 21 new millennium. How can I help you? Hi, is this Natalie? No, are you trying to reach Natalie Long? Yep, that's her. She is actually no longer with um, Century 21. Oh, what happened? Um, She moved to an... Okay, do you have her number? I, uh, I don't know if I still did, have her number on did, my roster. Did she leave on good terms or bad terms? Um, I just... Th uh, good terms. I, I just think she decided to do something else because she... Um, this wasn't, I think, her full-time job, so oh. it was just kind of oh. extra, and she, I mean, she hadn't oh. done anything oh. or had any, like, clientele or anything oh. to get moving, I guess. So she, I mean, that was her decision to do that, but oh. I don't have her number on my roster anymore. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for checking. No problem. Have a good day. You too. Bye. So I have two numbers for this, Natalie. Maybe this other one is her, her private number. You've reached Natalie Long with Century 21 New Millennium. Please leave your... New Millennium? Yeah, what the fuck's a roster? Who has a roster in 2018? Century 21 New Millennium, this is Megan. How can I help you? Hey, Megan. Is uh, Natalie around? Natalie? Yeah, Natalie. Um, Natalie Holt. Do you have Natalie Holt? I can give you her phone number. I have not seen her in the office today. Okay. Would you like that? Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Let's see. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put her on three-way. Here, here we go. Putting her on three-way. Calling Natalie. Yep. Calling her up. Why isn't she picking up? Like, is it because I have an out-of-area uh, number? this is Natalie with Century 21. I couldn't tell you. Please leave me a message. Ah, uh, what a hoe. Okay, I guess I'll call the number six Natalie on the list next, then. Okay. Here, let me put her on three-way. Oh, I just got put on hold. Hello? Thank you for calling Century 21 oh, no, New that's Millennium. Just the thing. How may Wait, I no. be of service or direct your call? Oh, <laughs> She put me on hold. Did you guys really hear the number when I when I muted it? Like I hardly ever use the mute thing, so I don't know if it you works. You've reached the voicemail box of Natalie Eland for a fast. Could you just like hear it through my headphones or something? Is that what it was? I should have like hummed over her or something. Oh shit! 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 I accidentally clicked it. It started calling it from Google Voice. Six weeks ten six week tenure says I should have the Natalie's compete in various challenges for who you serenade. And that sounds great if I could get through to any of them. We're on number seven already. What a stupid show today is. Hello. Hello? Um <clears throat> Hi, is this Natalie? May I ask who's calling? This is Brad. Okay, Brad, who are you with? I'm with Century 21. Who's this? <laughs> Natalie. Liz. Oh, okay. Hey, Natalie. That's weird. Like, you were just, I don't, I don't know. Like, why would you tell me who you were? <laughs> what the heck? I thought you were a uh, robocaller. What can I do for you, a Brad? A robocaller? Do I sound like a robocaller? <laughs> what can I do for you, hon? Um, we're, uh, we're, 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 so you're with like we're we're doing this thing where we're gonna give you one of our listings to sell. Can you sell like an extra listing? Do do you have like do you have the time to to do to do another listing? We're just gonna give it to you. It's kind of in the hood. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, actually, I'm with uh, now, but yeah. I know. I know. I can still help you. Okay, great. <laughs> 
Um, we've written a song that we think will help you sell it. Um, tell me what you think of this real quick. Natalie, Natalie, I'd love to do you vaginally. I'll wait until we actually meet. And that is when you'll go down on me. I really hated Mars Attacks. And every new Star Wars is whack. I'd love to enter you from the back. From the back. What do you know? She hung up. Like, I, I just don't know what to say to him. If I get through to a Natalie, what the hell do I say? Like, dur da dur da dur I'm with another realty company. I'm going to give you my listing. Is that what I should say? Hello, you reached Natalie. Okay. Next is Natalie from Remax. Brown Magic wants me to warn her that someone is prank calling people named Natalie. That's a good idea. Just to make sure she knows about it. Mika wants to know why there's a song about Natalie. Maybe I should explain that. Back in the early 2000s, there was an up-and-coming rap star named Hot Carl. He got kicked out of the game when Eminem became popular. And he writes lots of songs about how pissed off he is about that. He said he was almost a huge star, he thinks. Hi, this is Natalia Rubik with Remax. Ah, fuck. Anyway, he, he wrote a song about Natalie Portman. Like, the whole song is about Natalie Portman. Maybe I should just play the entire song right now. It's a short song. It's a, it's a minute and 25 seconds. Here, let's play the entire song. Not that I'm going to be spending any more t- much time on this, but... This song... For a sweet little Jewish actress named Natalie. Natalie, Natalie, I'd love to do you vaginally. I'll wait until we actually meet. And that is when you'll go down on me. I really hated Mars Attacks. And every new Star Wars is whack. I'd love to enter you from the back. From the back. Jewish and that is why naturally we should phone but actually I'll take a hand job Natalie Natalie I heard your dating take to know me but moonlight mile bomb tremendously and the MI paid me a shitload so Natalie Natalie this is a song I wrote quickly but one day I'll hold you carefully and finger you under a blanket So Natalie, Natalie We'll work together so tremendously But until we actually meet I'll settle for a hand job. I love you Yep, yep It's Eminem that pushed him out of being a, a huge rap star Not that horrible music so yeah, that's from his album. I guess it never got released. He was signed with Interscope, and then they ditched him, according to one of his songs, because of their new cash cow, Eminem. Ah, I liked him for a short time in the early 2000s. Some of his music is still pretty amusing. Holy shit, I'm a number 12 already. What am I doing with this show? Am I really doing an entire show of Natalie? Hello? Hi, Natalie? Yes. Hey there, uh, this is William from the corporate office. Hello? Okay. And um, we're, we're working on a new commercial for you. Like we're going to do TV spots for all of our realtors. Okay, we don't have a corporate office. Hey, 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 don't tell me what, what yep. I'm, where I'm from, lady, okay? Excuse you, me? You got it. I'm trying to pitch a new song to you. I just want to make sure it's okay with you, like so we can put it on the air. We're gonna we don't we don't have a corporate office. You know what I mean by corporate office. Everyone has uh, a corporate. No. Okay, j- just listen to this and tell me what you think. Natalie, Natalie, I'd love to do you vaginally. I wait until we actually meet, and that is when you'll go down on me. So that that's the beginning. They're still working on it. What do you think so far? Like to sell houses. Apparently, Team Realty does not have a corporate office, everyone. 
what do you know? You are looking for your birth mom who is named Natalie. Is she her? Okay. I'll do that. I regret jumping. This whole di like I'm I'm gonna do like two more, maybe three more, and then this is done. No more Natalie's. This is stupid. What am I doing? No offense, Max Power. He's international. Howdy, is this Natalie? This is Kristen. Oh crap. Is uh, Natalie around? Do you have a last name? Natalie Ciphers. Hold on one moment, I'll try it. Common for you. spelling. Okay, thank you. Whoa. The person at extension, one, one, six, eight. There's two numbers here for this, Natalie. Hi, you've reached Natalie Ciphers, and I'm unavailable. Oh. Okay, two more. Two more Natalies, and then we're done with this. Then the show's over. I regret jumping wants me to say that I'm another realtor, and somebody spray-painted Natalie rules on my for sale sign. That sounds hilarious. You've reached Natalie Dean with Moreland Properties. <sighs> I'm sorry I can't get to the phone, but please be sure to leave your name. I hate everyone named Natalie. Well, that was great. 17 Natalies. I got through to two of them. Great show so far. Good afternoon, Kellen Ability. Hey, is Natalie around? Uh, she's not in today. Ah, crud. I'll, ca <laughs> I'll call her other number, I guess. Yeah, you bet, probably best reaching her on her cell. Is, is that the 1704 number? Uh, let me check. Okay. Uh, did I just throw that out? Yes, I did. I was literally just updating my roster. Uh. Ooh, the roster. <laughs> is it like a Rolodex? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a document online that I have to uh, keep up with. Yeah. Let's see, Natalie... I have four oh nine uh, six, okay, all right. I'm calling it. I'm gonna put it on three way. The I'm person sorry? you have called oh, is unavailable. Look at right that, now. you're wrong. Please try again later. So you know what? I'm gonna try the number I have, because your number sucked. I'm putting it on three way. Ma'am? Hello? Ma'am? Roster lady? Yes. Oh hey hey I'm I'm calling her on three way isn't this weird? Oh. Hello Natalie. Ah Natalie hung up on me. What the heck? Why would she do that? Can you get her to stay on the phone? Who me? Yeah. No. But why would she just hang up? We didn't even say anything. She just picked up and hung up. That's not a good way to sell a house. You might have better luck just calling her directly. Freaking Natalie. I am. I'm calling her directly. Well, without me on the line. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's cool. I don't mind. <laughs> well, I, ha I do have work to get back to. Natalie, it's us. Who is us? It, it's me and Roster Girl. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, from the office. I don't it's know Stacey. That show. Okay, I don't know why you had to hang up on me. What you say your name is, Stacy? Yes. Okay, see, it's me and Stacy, Natalie, from the office. Okay. How can I help you? Okay, we wrote you a song. Listen, listen to this. Dear Natalie oh, Portman. Okay, you ready? Natalie, Natalie, I'd love to do you vaginally. I wait until we actually meet, and that is when you'll go down on me. I. Re Natalie? Na oh, she hung up, Stacy. Stacy? Stacy? Oh, okay. <laughs> they both hung up for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, so that was me calling 17 Natalie's. Um, maybe I'll try them off the air or something later some other time um, so I've got this number here like yesterday I was putting together uh, an episode of Mr. Davalina's wonderful world of prank calls and I noticed that the calls I was putting on there 
because I went back and I looked at uh, where the, you know the original show, where it came from, and somebody made a comment which made me realize that was the show, the dog park show, where Bob Murphy came from. So I posted it on the PLA group, and I said, "Hey, tell me which of these lists I called Bob Murphy on." I don't think I'm making any sense. I'm looking at the list right now, trying to find him. Anyway, like I, I searched some emails. I found the original list. I thought Bob Murphy was from that uh, Pelican, the Homeowners Association, where I told everyone, everyone I was on Pelican. But I was wrong. It wasn't that one. It was this one. Oh, yeah. And Bob Murphy. Like, you guys know Bob Murphy, right? Like, it, it's, I, never got, I never reached him. He wasn't home. But there was a voicemail, and it said this. Bob Murphy. There it is. Bob Murphy. Bob Murphy. And I don't know why people think that's so hilarious. I thought it was funny at the time. I can't remember why. But wouldn't it be fun to actually talk to Bob Murphy? He's probably not going to be home today. So yeah, I got to change my area code. So he, he lives in the dog park. Um, I mean, he doesn't live. <laughs> Bob Murphy does not live in the dog park. He lives with a homeowners association that has a dog park. It's the dog park where I was saying that you know we were shooting dogs out of cannons and there were poodle files your dog's a registered poodle file maybe i should just say that and this text is really tiny it's hard to see so we're calling bob murphy and he's probably not going to pick up we're probably just going to get his voicemail but at least we'll get to hear the voicemail i guess oh no oh no we're sorry you have reached a number oh, that no. has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Poor Bob. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check. We're sorry. This person is dead. Please hang up and give a moment of silence. Message PLA. Okay, but... But... I want to make sure I have the right area code. Rest in peace, Bob Murphy. These area codes, like like some of the listings have area codes, but they're all over the place. His last words were Bob Murphy, says Carlton Banks. I'm going to try again. I'm just going to make sure. I'm going to copy and paste it this time. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to dial it manually. Four rings. Why would there be four rings for a disconnected number? You have reached to... Whoa, no, sh nine. stop, stop. Look at that. Phone right Bob's now. Bob's alive, everyone. Please leave your name, telephone hey. number, <laughs> and a brief message. All right, that's Bob's wife. Oh, my God. We thought Bob was dead there for a little bit. Let's try one more time. There's a Bob and a Janet on this list here. I thought we had dogs' names on this list. You have reached... One more try. Yeah, he could still be dead. I mean, the Bob Murphy voicemail is gone. We've got like a normal answering machine now. I'm not going to leave the... <laughs> Kevin wants me to leave the Bob Murphy sound clip on his voicemail. That would be hilarious if he was dead and his wife got to hear that. Be like, oh my God, my Bob is calling me from the, from the grave. You have re Okay, so... Bob Murphy may be alive. His number still seems to work. Um, how about Craigslist ads? I've got a bunch of Craigslist ads here from Reggie. Uh, I've got liquor stores from I Regret Jumping. Anyone have any ideas uh, of what I could do with liquor stores? Liquor stores with funny names? Quick chat room. Liquor stores or Craigslist ads? Or, um, I don't know, I've got Geico agents here. Okay, three votes for Craigslist. Oh, wow, a billion votes for Craigslist. Everybody hates your liquor store list. I regret jumping, sorry. Antique microwave to borrow for senior picture. <laughs> what? All right, let me change my area code. Antique microwave. My daughter is a senior and is heavily involved in show choir she would like to take her senior picture with an antique microwave what does any of that have to do with an antique microwave 
No harm would come to your treasure, but we, it would create a treasure for us. Please call if you can help. My name is Breeze. She's, <laughs> so this mom, whose name is Breeze, needs an antique microwave for her daughter's senior picture. That sounds normal. All right. I'm going to tell her I have a steam-powered one from the, from the late 18th century. <laughs> 19th century, I mean. Johnny wants me to say there's a lot of radiation leaks. Bob Murphy. Man, what a weird request. Here, let me try one more time. Maybe she's just on the other line. Yeah, I'll, I'll say the microwave has a half-life of 5,000 years. We can't shut it off. We've tried. You have to keep uh, keep it cooled. Keep water running around it. Well, shit. Okay. All right. Deer skull mounts. Eighty dollars. Have you killed a deer and don't want to pay upwards of four thousand? I mean, four hundred dollars to get it shoulder mounted, and then then I am the guy you need to see. I've been doing skull mounts for myself and others for eight years now, and I've gotten pretty good. Pretty good. P u r t y good. I treat every skull as it is my own. <laughs> really? You hang your own skull up on walls? Mike wants me to ask him if I can skull mount him, if you know what I mean. Hello? Hello, I'm calling about your skull mounting. Yes, sir. Uh, would it still be $400 if it were a gerbil skull? A gerbil skull? Yeah, or like two gerbil skulls. They they were brothers. Never done a gerbil skull. Is it possible to do? Mm, I don't know. I'll have to Google it. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. You have to Google it? I thought you were a professional. You said you were pretty good. Well, I am pretty good, but I, I do deer heads. Yeah, but it's just it's like a smaller deer head. Is there any way you can modify, like, a deer skull to look like a gerbil skull so it's, like, a really big gerbil skull? I don't know. Might be. What? Might be. Well, yeah. Is that what you said? Uh-huh. Uh, nothing. Um, let's see. Um, is there any way that I could come over there and mount your skull, if you know what I mean? Wink, wink. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just saying, you know, would you, would you trade, uh, you know, quote-unquote favors for doing this for me? Like, on what kind of flavor you got. Oh, you know. You know, wink, wink. If you're into that. No, I don't know, wink, wink. Oh, but anyway, on. it's not $400, it's $80. I don't know where you got the $400. Oh, oh, yeah, it says on here you don't want to pay upward of $400. Yeah, that's $80. Yeah. Well, shit, I was going to pay 400 but if it's just 80 that sounds good, too. Yeah, no, I wouldn't wouldn't treat you like that. I try to be fair to everybody. Oh, thanks. But what never guy. done a gerbil skull. Yep. Two gerbil skulls. I want to put them on one mount next to each other and put, like, a, a little gold plaque. A logo? What do you want on the logo plaque? Uh, just the name, uh, Mr. Hitler. For one, and the other one was named uh, Mr. Hitler, too. You know, number, num too. Num yeah, number two. What about Stalin? That would have been one. Did you say... Huh? Nothing. Kind of broke up on me there a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. Supposed to be out in the woods. You're in the woods? I said, you must be out in the woods. You broke up on me. Oh, your, your mom's out in the woods. She probably is. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yep. I wrote a song for uh, this girl named Natalie. Her, she's a realtor. You want to hear it? Sure. Okay, here it goes. Natalie, Natalie, I'd love to do you vaginally. I'll wait until we actually meet, and that is when you'll go down on me. Do you think that would get her to to go out with me? Uh, yeah. Was that a yes? Was that an affirmative? Huh? Was that an affirmative? Never know. Yep, you never know. 
Yep. Hitler one and Hitler two. That's oh no 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 it's 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 yeah it's Mister Hitler is the first one's name and then Mister Hitler yeah the other one is Mister Hitler two like number two Mister Hitler two yep do you do, I, do, I still like Stalin I think Stalin would have been a better name uh well please don't disrespect the memory of my two gerbils they both died tragically it still hurts. I stepped on them both. How did, how, how did they tragically die? I stomped on them really hard for a YouTube video. For a funny YouTube video. What's the name of YouTube video? I'll look it up. Uh, stomping on a gerbil really hard. It'll be the third one. Third, third, third result down. Is All right, a gerbil then. the size of a ferret? Yeah, pretty much. Whoa, what's that? That's me looking up your YouTube video. Oh, okay. You you really want to watch me stomp on my gerbil and kill him? Kill them both at the same time? Uh, I've seen worse, I guess. Why do you want to see that, though? Why would you want to do that to him? I don't know, because it, it seemed funny at the time. Not funny now? Well, no, because they're dead, and that sucks. And now you need another gerbil. How do you know you didn't crack your skull? How do you know I can skull mount them? You didn't crack your skull. Oh, no, I stomped on the back of them. On the back of them? Yeah, so their skulls are fine. So you broke their backbone. Yep. I'm not a, I'm not a monster. Come on. I wouldn't stomp on their Don't heads. Be. How do you spell gerbil? <laughs> How do you spell gerbil? Uh, G-H-E-R-B-I-L-E. Sure. Oh, uh, no, I don't see it. So it looks like this guy here has two roosters left. Do you think he still has them over in Hadesburg? Fifteen dollars each for a rooster. Do you think that's a good deal? Ah, uh, depends on what. Kind of... I didn't hear that. Here, let's try him out. Let's see what happens. I have two. I'm not ro- it on the- hey, shut up! I have two roosters left. Seventeen weeks old. I'm rehoming them. I bought several just in case. I'm a rookie at chicken keeping. I killed most of them. Why is the phone Ooh. ringing? Hello? Hello? Hey, oh, not you, uh, gerbil person. I'm calling about your roosters. Yeah, don't have it. I, no, I'm, I'm talking to someone else. You're on three-way. This is a three-way call, you guys. Rooster? Okay. Rooster person? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. Do you still have those two roosters left? I do. Okay, so $15 each. Uh-huh. Okay, and I've got this guy on the phone. He says he can mount their heads for $80. Okay. Would you charge per head, per rooster, or would you do them both for $80? Probably per head. Okay. We're going we're gonna, to like mount their heads on a mount on the wall, sir, the rooster heads. <laughs> well, that'll be a first one on me. Yep. <laughs> like, would it be possible... Do you think maybe um, if we only take the heads, would it would it be a discount? Like, could we get them for five bucks? How about ten each, and you send me a picture after you get them mounted. That sounds great. I can do that. Can you? Good. All right, it's gonna happen. We're doing it. All right, let's do it then. We will. Just watch. So what radio station is this? This isn't a radio station. I'm, I'm on the phone with my uh, friend from Craigslist. He does gerbil head mounting. and <laughs> Oh, man. Yep. That was pretty funny, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was. Why do, you want to see, why do you want to see pictures of this? Because I've never seen a uh, rooster head mounted. You guys are both sick people. He's like on the on the YouTube's, like looking up pictures of gerbils getting stomped. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up, isn't it? I don't know. I've never seen that either. But I really would love to see the rooster heads mounted. Well, he just hung up, so I guess it's not going to happen. Dang. Fuck. Well, I'm sorry. It's all right. All right, man. What Thanks. you doing? Looking at cars. Really? Can Can you tell that kid in the background to shut the fuck up? please actually i won't do that come he's on son. i know but he's he's being kind of irritating really yeah <laughs> just tell him to be quiet Sorry. tell him to shut the fuck up 
I won't tell him that. I mean, I can tell him to use his inside voice. You want me to do that? Yeah, could you? I'd appreciate it. Hey, Leo, can you use your inside voice, buddy? There's a guy, hey, Leo. There's a guy getting really irritated with you talking out loud. There you go. You see? Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, man. All Anything right. Anything else I can do for you? I'll get back to you about those rooster heads. I got to call okay. this other guy back and make sure he's still up for it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Those were just the funniest two calls I've ever made in my entire life. What'd you guys think? Ronk says they were awesome. No, Ronk, you don't have to be nice. Come on. Be honest. Tell me how incredibly fucking bored you've been for the past 10 minutes. I don't mind. I can take it. It's fine. Uh, We've got a cracked iPhone 6. $200 or best offer for parts only. Hey, (laughs) the, the ad says, hey, how's it going? Like he actually wrote that in the ad. Hey, how's it going? The iPhone I'm selling is for parts only. This iPhone was dropped in water. It still comes on. Shows the front screen, but it does not work. If you're interested, send me a text message. First letting me know that you're interested, and then I'll call you. So he's not going to pick up. I'm going to send him a text message. (laughs) Says, hey, how's it going? (laughs) Okay, Ronk. Uh, That's how we'll start the conversation. I'm going to say, I'm great. And you? I'm great. And you? Hello? Hello? I'm great. And you? Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, I'm I'm pretty good. How how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Oh, that's cool. Thanks for asking. Who is this? I'm doing real good. Um, I'm calling about your uh, Craigslist ad. Okay, um, which one? Uh, Oh, Jeep. Yeah, well, no, actually, the, the iPhone. Oh, okay. The cracked um, iPhone 6. Right. Um, their phone, the phone is um, for ports only. So, yeah, you know, the, but, screen is, the screen is cracked, and, um, you know, I guess it, it'll turn on if you put the charger in it. Uh-huh. It's so the sign and everything. Yeah. But it has slight water damage and things like that. So, oh, I know how to fix that stuff. Like, I've got this machine oh. I can hook it up to. Like, was it your phone? Uh-huh. Say it again? Was it your phone? Yeah, it was my phone. Did you have a lot of good stuff in there? Um, what do you mean? Well, I don't know. I got this, like, I, I'm a, I, I repair, um, you know, iPhones and stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I can just open it up and take the circuit board out and plug it into a new iPhone, you know, new thingy, new, new, new everything and make it work. And when I do that, I'm going to be able to see all your personal data. It's going to be awesome. Oh. Yep, yep. You got any, like, dick pics in there? Anything that's going to be shocking to me? No. Why would you say this? Well, I'm just asking, you know. Like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to be, like, when I get this thing working, I'm going to be able to scroll through all your contacts. I'm going to see every picture you've ever taken. I'm going to be able oh, to read all. <laughs> he hung up. He didn't like that. So let's, let's offer 300 <laughs> It's true, though. Like, really, what's he doing? All that stuff's still in there. It didn't get washed away in the toilet. <laughs> Why does it go busy? Like, what's he doing to make his phone go busy? That's weird. Now it's fast busy. Am I, am I like, out of minutes or something? Maybe that's it. That can't be it. <laughs> Here, let's make sure my, my callings are still working. Tired of excessive fees on your accounts? Check out Altonize Community Federal Credit Union, your full-service financial institution serving Madison and Macoupin counties. Let's hear the weather. Altonized, it's where you belong. Yeah. Weathervendor.com time is Wednesday, March 28th, 3.11 p.m. The current temperature is 46 and rain. Today's forecast. Chance of rain, high of 52, low 45. Sunset at 7.20 p.m. Sounds nice over there. Tomorrow, rain, high of 49, low 36. This weekend's forecast, Saturday. Chance of rain. High. All right, that's enough. Let me try him one more time. He's probably taking that ad down. He's like, oh, shit. They're going to get all my personal info. Can't have that. All right. He won't. I, I don't know what he's doing. Like, why does that happen? Why does it go busy? That's, that's confusing. I don't like that. 
needs to stop. So yeah, he's probably going to take that down here. Let me refresh it. Is it taken down yet? No, it's still up there. He probably didn't think of that. Reminds me when I bought this MacBook like 10 years ago. This guy left everything in it. Everything. Like, just, just everything. Videos, pictures, texts. He left his account signed in on the MacBook. Like, I could text people. Uh, I, I had all of his passwords. You know, you can look at the passwords in, in, in Chrome or Firefox or whatever he was using. I was able to, to go on to his uh, LDS dating account. That was great. Videos, personal videos, years and years of pictures. I still have his music collection. I kept all of his music. He had a lot of show tunes. All right, puppy for sale, two months old. Oh, I wish I would have called this for the head mounting thing. Uh, I have a very outgoing, smart female puppy. She is light brown and dark brown. Great around kids, loves to play and loves to cuddle. Message me or call me for pictures. She's very good with cats. I have two and they play all day and just have a full-time job. Cannot give Diamond the attention she needs. All right. This is from 21 days ago, by the way. When did Reggie send me these? Eight days ago? Reggie sending me old shit. What the hell, Reggie? <laughs> all right. Um... I regret jumping wants me to ask if uh, Diamond's had any tactical training, training, because she will. Diamond's going to be a suicide bomber. Hello? Yeah. Hey, I was calling about that smart female outgoing puppy. Oh, yeah, she sold. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm the one, we're, we're the family that got her. Oh, okay, yes. Do you know, like, um... Has she had any tactical training? As in? Like military? It seems like she's very um, focused. Aggressive? What? Is she aggressive? No, no, she's not aggressive. It's just like she keeps um, setting up booby traps and uh, outsmarting us. And like... Um, she, My husband is military. Oh, that must be where she picked it up. Because you said she's very smart and outgoing. Yeah. Like, she keeps doing those um, hand signals, those military hand signals. Yeah. Um, like, like, you know, um, pointing to her eyes and, and doing chop, chop things with her hands. And, you know, silent, silent uh, signaling that you do when you're out there on the battlefield. Yeah. And we actually had a bomb. Like, don't ask. Okay, this is none of your business. But we had a bomb in the basement. Uh, um, just it's just a science project, okay? And uh, she went down there and defused it. Like, like yes. that, that's what I'm saying about military training. She keeps just doing things that uh, it doesn't seem like stuff that a normal puppy would do. Yes, uh, my husband's military, so she's been around. Like I said, she's been around everything that we've done, you know. Uh. So. I, I did, you know, I didn't think that was just something that I didn't think she was gonna still do it once we, you know, got rid of her. Yeah, like you know how um, she she buries her poop. Like she goes out there and she'll dig an eight foot hole, like a perfectly square eight foot cube hole, and carry her poop down into it and then fill it back up. You know how you do yeah. that to to the privates or whatever. Uh huh. You, you tell them to dig a hole and and then make them fill it back up. Like she does that. That's weird. Did your husband make the dog dig eight foot holes? Oh, um, he does. He does foundation as well. So like I said, she's been outside with us. She's been in the house. She's you know, she's been around everything. She's even went to the base with us before. Oh. So she's been around all the military training that he's done. Um. She's been around him the whole time. He's done foundation work. Um, our cat had died about uh, three weeks before we sold her. Yeah. And she watched us get in the backyard and dig a hole and put him in there. We had a little service for him. You know, that was a cat we didn't have Aww. for a few years. I'm sorry. So she's, she's, she watches. She's just like a child. That's why, you know, it was really hard for me to get rid of her. 
Um, she watches everything that you do, and she she can you know she catches yeah. up on it very fast. Well, this one is like um, like I, I don't even know how to take apart my guns really. I, I just know how to clean them, but uh, the puppy keeps taking apart our guns and then putting them back together. You know what I'm taking the guns apart. Yeah, I'm putting them back together. You know, like you do in the military. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, did, did you guys I, teach the know, puppy how to do that? Okay, so how is she doing that? Because I've never seen her taking a gun apart. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen a a, a dog take a gun apart. I think that's bizarre. I, I'm like, it, it's mind blowing. Uh, if you search on YouTube. Um, for you know, puppy taking a gun apart. We we posted it on YouTube. It's getting a lot of hits, kind of going viral because it keeps doing it. Like we leave our guns out laying around, and it it you know. Yeah, send them. me the link to it because I want to see that because I don't think I've I don't think I've ever taken a gun apart. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand that guy. Can you tell him to shut the fuck up? You said excuse me. Um, we have a cat also. And the puppy keeps. Oh, wa- what did you just say? You said, you said, "Who got shut the fuck up?" Because that's my husband, sir. Oh, he was being irritating. He was just going blah 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 in the background. He was saying that he would like to, to get his dog back, but he simply sold it. It's no longer an option. Is what he yeah. was saying, sir. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, but we we've got a cat. <laughs> wow, the the husband just made the wife hang up. He's like, "Have a good day," and she hung right up. King Richard, I think it was King Richard's idea. He wanted me to say that the the puppy was waterboarding the the cat. We can't have that. It's not right. Puppy shouldn't be doing that. Uh, Garden dirt. Wanted garden dirt or someone to haul some for me. I need someone. This is all in caps, so he's yelling. I need somebody to haul some dirt for me. Or if you have some garden dirt for sale and can haul it, I know where I can get some, but I need somebody to haul it for me. Call and give me a price. Okay. Quick, everyone. (laughs) Tell me what to say to this person. This is from 13 days ago. Hello. Hello. I'm calling about your garden dirt hauling... And, uh, uh, yeah, well, he already got some for the garden. Yeah, I'm. The, I appreciate you calling. I'm huh? the one that did it. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that came and hauled it for him. Remember? Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. Remember? Are you, I thought it was a lady that did it. Uh, don't assume my gender. You know, it's 2018. Uh, huh? It's 2018. Please don't assume my gender. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that dirt was working out okay for you. Uh, he's got it loaded and put on the garden. I don't know how, I guess it is. It looks like good dirt that'll grow veggies good. Okay, that's good. There, there's a problem, though. Um, I talked to the person where the dirt came from. Yeah. And that person told me that the dirt is from an Indian burial ground and that you might have some problems with poltergeists. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, have you ever seen that movie? <laughs> Oh my lord, that's so silly. No, I'm completely serious. You're you're like are you growing vegetables out there? It would, that's what we plan to do with it. Yeah, they might be haunted haunted vegetables. I don't care. Who cares? <laughs> oh, you're gonna care. Like they're gonna be like like, you know, poltergeisting everywhere, doing all kinds of crazy yeah. poltergeist things. You don't want that. I think you're I think you're I don't know what you are. What does that mean? Oh, my gosh. That was rude. What does that mean? I don't think that you... Uh, I just don't know. Never had a call like this before in my life. Yeah, I know. It's the and weirdest thing. I'm 80 thing. years old. But I'm, I'm the, I talked to the person where the dirt came from, and they said it was definitely dirt taken from... The in- dirt that came from uh, Blackwell Company. And you don't work for Blackwell. Oh, you don't know that. You don't know where I work. Well, you don't know about us either, don't, so goodbye. Don't assume my employer. Assume my employer. Okay. I'm watching the chat, Greg. Why wouldn't I watch the chat? I mean, holy shit, I've been talking about the chat for the past one hour. Using ideas that people give me in the chat. Why wouldn't I be watching the chat? Holy shit, Greg. 
What the hell, Greg? Of course I'm watching the chat. What kind of question is that? All right, we've got a hot tub here. It's a big hot tub. It's only $285. Six people seats. Power isn't work. That's what it says. Power isn't work. Need new parts for power electricity. As opposed to what? The not unpowered? Okay. I have walls. Hold around hot tub and steps to cover top two. I'm ask for $285. Cash only or best offer. Please text me or call. So we've got a number to call and we've got a number to text. I regret jumping. Wants to know, did he try turning it off and back on again? So here we go. Calling the hot tub person. Thank you for calling. You will now be connected to the person you dialed. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is weird. Hello, one moment for the call to connect. Thanks. Who's this? What company did I reach? Uh, you haven't reached a company. You're you're calling an individual. Oh well, like why? Why is there a secretary for the individual? Uh, just a second. That's weird. You've answered the phone. What? Saying hi. This is Heath. Hi, Heath. Hi. Who's calling? This is Brad. So if you're not a company, how come I hear a call center in the background? That's weird. I'm so confused. Uh, is this a scam? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a sign language interpreter on the phone because I'm a deaf person. So oh. that's why I use a sign language interpreter on the phone. Wait, you're a deaf through person? Sorens, through Sorens and Video Relay Service. So it's better than using a TTY. Well, who says? Like, I don't know. I kind of prefer the TTY. They don't have as much attitude as you. I'm sorry. Who's calling? Uh, my name is Brad. It's about the Craigslist ad. So, um... You, I'm sorry. Your Craigslist advertisement? Um, well, you should know. You're the one that put it up there, lady. Oh, man, I, I wish I was on the TTY right now. That'd be so much easier than dealing I'm with I'm sorry. You. I'm a little confused why you're calling. You're, I'm calling about your dumb calling. Craigslist ad. The hot tub. It's about the hot tub. I, I have some power electricity here. You're calling about my hot tub. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's still for sale. You don't sound deaf. Are you sure you're deaf? Yes, I'm a deaf individual. There's a sign language interpreter on the phone. A sign I'm language on the deaf. phone. Wait, is is it you that's deaf, or is or are you the interpreter? And the and female is the interpreter. Me, the male, who everything. You don't sound like a male, though. You, you, you sound like a female. You don't sound like a male. Like you, I, I don't mean to assume your gender or anything, but you just you don't sound like a male. Yeah, that's because the interpreter is interpreting into sign language and back into English what the deaf individual says. But, but you don't sound like you're deaf. Like, so why would you need the the interpreter doing sign language? Like, because we're just talking. Like, it sounds like you can hear me just fine. And, and also, you, I, I'm I, like like I I know it's 2018 and everything, but you're definitely not a male. I don't know what you're trying to pull. Why would you use sign language? Like, you, so it's a video chat? So you're, you're saying you're a male? The, yes, we see each other on a video screen. Oh, that's crazy. But like, I, TTY use, uses an interpreter as well, but that's typing. And this, we see each other on video screens. Well, TTY so is not really an interpreter. the conversation goes back and forth between yourself and the caller, and the interpreter will sign and then speak. But why are you talking and to an interpreter? Because you, you hear me just fine. 
sir. Why, what are you whispering? I heard you whisper something. The interpreter can hear you. Well, why does the interpreter need to listen in on our conversation, though? That's weird. The interpreter is not a scam. No, I never said anything was a the scam. The interpreter is a real person. You're the one that said it was a scam. And, and this sounds like a scam, to be honest, because you're telling me you're a male. You're obviously a female. I can tell by your voice. Okay, okay, can, look I'm, at me. Okay, look, please try and understand. I can't look at you. There's a female interpreter. I, I don't have a video phone. Like, I just, I'm just calling from a regular phone. I'm on my home phone. You can meet me in person, and then you'll understand. Oh, I'm a completely oh, different person. oh, so you want to meet now. Is that a threat? I have the ad. Okay, if you're calling about the hot tub, you need the address for the hot tub. Ma'am, like, why do you have to have such a bitchy attitude about it? Like, like I don't know, your, your inflections and everything, it just seems like you're kind of a big jerk. I don't have an attitude. Y you do, too. You, you're, you're, like, giving me such an attitude. You're, you're using a sassy voice. I'm not a jerk. Please stop using a sassy voice with me. I'm a very nice person. Well, you said that with a really sassy voice, so it came out as sarcastic. I'm not voicing. The interpreter is voicing. Well, I can't see the interpreter. Like, I don't have a video screen. I, I can only hear you. I okay. Okay. Are you able to text instead on the phone? Yeah. I can give you my phone number to text. Yeah. Okay. I'll just do that because, oh, my God. At least maybe in a text I'll believe that you're a Well, you're okay, a let's male. go ahead and give you my phone number. It's 601. Blah, blah, don't do that. I've got listeners. There's people listening. There, there's, there's, there's 82 people listening on the Mixler right now. No, no giving out numbers. That's a bad idea. I've made that mistake before. Yep. Anyway, okay. I have it. It's on the Craigslist do, ad. I'll just... I'll do you do, have I'll, something I'll, where you can write it down on blah, paper? Blah, 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 blah. Quiet. Quiet, you. I'm hanging up. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. You didn't do very good at explaining how this whole thing works. It was very unprofessional of you. I'm sorry. You're being very rude. We're still on the line. D don't be sarcastic with me, sir. I I have the address. I have the hot tub still. Oh, God. Okay, explain to me, deaf listeners of mine. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't have deaf listeners. I'm thinking of the blind listeners. But really, why would they use a video phone with sign language? Why wouldn't they just type? Why wouldn't they just use the TTY interpreter thing? That was confusing. Like, she didn't even explain it when we first got on the phone. Like, when you call the TTY operators, they, they explain to you. They're like, have you ever used the deaf service before? Do you know how this works? Just want to make sure you understand. She didn't do that. It was just weird. She made it weird. And then she tried to tell me she was a male. I know she's not a male. Oh my god. I'm still confused. Everybody keeps mentioning the, the coin stuff. I should talk about the coin stuff. Hold on. Let me go to the coin, the Kickstarter page. Yeah, the, the coin, uh, the, the PLA 2018 coin is currently at $3,084. Holy fucking shit. Uh, the other day it was at 2400 I think, 2500 whatever. And I said, okay, so I guess this means I'm going to do snowplow show coins. Um, but this also means that I can't give snowplow show coins to anybody but the Kickstarter people. And that made more people um, subscribe to the Kickstarter. And it's still mostly true. It's mostly just Kickstarter people are going to get them. I'll have a few left over, but not many. 
Um, but 3,000, that means I can now also do the lapel pins. So we're going to get... We're going to get a new PLA coin, the 2018 PLA coin. It looks just like last year's, but it doesn't look like crap because it won't have that weird coating thing all over it. But then we're also going to get a snowplow show coin, which has not been designed yet. Um, it, there's a thread in the Facebook group if anyone wants to put ideas in there, like what to write on it. You know, quotes from the show. What are quotes from the show? I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, Roy Sipians yelling at me. But yeah, uh, PLA coin, snowplow show coin, and now a lapel pin. Like a little, it's going to be shaped like a PLA bell. It's going to be full color. It's going to be like a, an inch, maybe, maybe, yeah, probably an inch. Very small. Lapel pin. We're going to have lapel pin. So we're getting three things out of this Kickstarter. Thanks to you guys for... for Holy shit, $3,000. <laughs> be blowing all of that on lapel pins and coins. It's going to be great. Uh, Robert wants a Bob Murphy coin. Okay. Oh, no, that's what I should write on the Snowplow Show coin. I get it. Yeah, in memory of Bob Murphy, since he's probably dead. Yeah, yeah, I guess you'll get three things for $10, hey? Um, I guess. That kind of sucks. <laughs> Am I even making any money at that point? If you're a $10 supporter, you should be a $20 supporter because you're getting so much stuff. It'll all work out in the end. Like, I'm not really doing this to make money exactly. I just wanted to have cool coins. And you guys supported the Kickstarter for more than I expected. I didn't really want to do... Well, I mean, I want to do Snowplow Show coins, but I didn't think it would happen. I didn't think the Kickstarter would get that big. But it has, so we're doing all these three things, and I guess I just owe one to everybody that's a Kickstarter supporter. Um, I don't think I'll lose money on the $10 ones, but I probably it'll probably just break even, basically. And that's okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'll make up for it because there's a bunch of you know $20 supporters and 30 and 50 It'll all work out. Everything's going to be perfect. Thanks, everyone, for supporting the thing. Woohoo! Yay! All right, face paintings. Need a face painter for a special event or just any event? I am the one to call. I charge sixty dollars for two hours. If interested, feel free to text me at. And uh, apparently, uh, that comes with the added bonus of we will post pictures of all of the kids whose faces we paint on our Craigslist ad. Because that's all this Craigslist ad is, is a bunch of kids. I'll have to ask about that. I'm sure she gets permission. Chicken pox party. What kind of, uh, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of face painting am I going to ask for? I don't know what to do. Na Nazi party. Having a Nazi party, white supremacist. Hello. Hello, I'm calling about your face painting. Yes. How are you doing today? Hello. Good. That's good. Good to hear. Don't ask how I'm doing or anything, but um, yeah. So, do you do uh, parties for adults too, or do you just do kids stuff? Uh, uh, no, I don't. Ha I don't have anything in general. Yeah, I could do an adult party. Okay, great. Um. So, like, we're going to be painting more than just faces, though, if you know what I mean. Um, like, what kind of stuff do you want? <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's, um, like, have you ever heard of those uh, Craigslist sex parties? Like, we all get together in a motel, and uh -huh. we just kind of strip down and go at it. And there's a bunch of people here that would want you to just kind of paint randomly all over their bodies while they're going at it. Uh-huh. What? Um... I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great fun for everyone. You don't have to get um, naked if you want to. We we don't we don't tell anyone they have to get naked. It's mm -hmm. totally up to you. But, uh, what day would this be on? Uh, it's gonna be tonight. Tonight? Uh, yeah. what time? Uh, tonight at seven p.m. Uh, where? At the Motel Six. Uh, where would it be at? 
at Motel 6, like uh, on room uh, 212. And here's the thing, though. Like, sometimes these parties get busted. Like, the cops could uh -huh. break in, and you'll end up having a criminal record and everything. But, like, that's stupid, you know? We don't feel like we're doing anything wrong. We're just showing people a good time. Uh, this kind this sounds kind of sketchy. I'm not sure if I'm down to no, do. No, it's cool. That. It's like, come on, like it's like the laws are dumb. Like the it's just the laws that are sketchy. It's not us. Um, we're, we're just doing what comes natural, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. I'm actually not comfortable doing it. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Uh, we, we were actually gonna anyways. we were gonna, we were we were gonna ask if you could like um paint on fake condoms. On, on, uh -huh. Onto the men so they could trick the women into having unprotected sex. Yeah, like um, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> but w what if what if you did that beforehand, and you know you won't actually be at the sex party. You can just paint on fake condoms to all the men. Um, just to trick them. No, I'm sorry. Just to trick the women. <laughs> Why not? I, I can't. I don't think you could get busted for that because that, that you know that's before the party starts. You could come around six. Yeah, but no, I'm not. I'm not comfortable doing it. Thank you, anyways. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Oh, hey, ma'am. Oh man. <laughs> uh, uh, should I call back? No, I wanted to ask her about my kids' party too. <laughs> uh, the call ended by rem uh, yeah. She. I don't know what she did. I think she hit the. Why didn't it go to voicemail? That's weird. I wanted to be like, incidentally, my little girl's having a birthday party this weekend. <laughs> Can you do that? But nope. Missed my chance. Greg T wants me to uh, ask if they can paint cows and horses. Wouldn't it be like paint like a political message on the side of goats or something? Get her to do that. <laughs> but it's too late. No, she won't pick up. All right. Uh, this person is selling a signed and framed picture of dolphins. Mark Newman. Is he famous? It doesn't look that impressive to me. It's just... Yeah, okay. I wonder if it's sold yet. I could say I'm Mark Newman. Unless this guy is Mark Newman. You have reached the voicemail box. I don't give you permission. It would be like, that painting's worth a hundred. Easily. What do you think you're doing? I hate black man. Hi. Hello, Brad. Hey, what you doing? This is the phone winners. We're going to fuck your shit up. Crap. Family. Don't do that. You're fucked. Please. You're fucked, buddy. Please don't. You're fucked. Got you now. This is Adolf Nippler and the phone winners. Wow. Fucking shit. Oh, hey, I'm calling about your uh, Mark Newman framed picture of dolphins. Yes. My friend Adolf Nippler has a thing or two to tell you. Go ahead, Adolf. Hey, I'm calling about the, the dolphins. The dolphins. The dolphins. The dolphins! She hung up. I don't know why. So strange. Yeah, you fucked it up. Thanks a lot, Adolf. Good job. I just fucked this shit up, family. Just fucked it up. Can you yell phone, phone winners away? Phone winners away! Alright, thanks. Bye. God damn it. Would have been a great call, too. It's just a picture of, of dolphins in a, a lake or whatever. In, a, in an ocean, not a lake. <laughs> dolphins aren't in lakes. I don't think it's really signed either. It's just, you know, the artist puts their signature in the bottom like an artist does. They're not picking up. Here, I'll let you guys see the dolphin thing. I'm pasting it in the chat room since they wouldn't even pick up. You're on the air. I'm, uh, I'm so glad I decided to take a call. <laughs> that was totally worth it. Good job on that. 
You got to scream into the show. Good job. All right, cockatiel. $75 for a cockatiel. Is that normal? Like, I thought the cockatiels were the cheap ones. Hand fed cockatiel has not been DNA tested yet. Why would you DNA test a cockatiel? Like, what am I missing there? Uh, he slash she hatched on November 17th, 2017. Very friendly and loves kids. The mother was a cinnamon pearl and the father was all white. Wow. Uh, contact me by email or text or call. We have multiple pictures. Do cockatiels talk? I mean, like, 75 bucks, really? DNA testing assures the gender. Otherwise, you can feel the hip bones and goose. Thanks, Ronk. All right. I guess I'll call this. I hope they sold it. Like, how, how old is this? 23 days ago. They have to have gotten rid of it by now. Hello. Hi, I'm calling about that cockatiel on Craigslist. I actually just sold it. Yeah, we're the ones that got it. We're the family, oh, okay. family that picked it up. Are, are you missing it yet? Yeah, actually. Are you? <laughs> I asked uh, my boyfriend, actually my mom asked my boyfriend yesterday if we were missing him. And he said, heck no. And I said, yeah. Yeah, well, like I'm just confused because it keeps saying the weirdest things. What is he saying? He's like reciting um, like just weird. Uh, okay. So like I, I wrote this all down. He keeps saying, hey, Bob, how are we doing on that Henderson file? The deadline's fast approaching and we really need to get this locked down. This is a million dollar account and we don't want to let it slip through our fingers. We should meet for lunch Wednesday to discuss this and see where we are. Let's meet at Carlito's Cabo Cactus Room for Cactus Margaritas and we'll brainstorm the details. Like, did you guys teach it that? Because it keeps saying that over and over. No. Ah, it's it's kind of irritating. Like, that's the main thing it says. I've never heard that before. And then he keeps begging for help. No. Like, it never heard saying, that either. Please help me. Please stop. Please no, no, please no. Please stop. Mm-mm. No, I've never even heard that in my household before. Oh, what kind of things did you guys teach it to say? Uh, like, we never really taught him anything except what you're doing, and he barely even said that because he just whistle whistles. Yeah, he whistles all the time, but then he keeps asking about the Henderson file. Like, is um, d does someone in your family talk to someone named Bob about the Henderson file? No, I don't even have a Bob in my family. Huh. Well, where did he get all this from? I'm not sure. He keeps, like, filling his mouth with peanut butter and playing the harmonica. What? The bird. It, like, it keeps doing this weird harmonica thing. It's super irritating. I mean, we love him and everything. He's an awesome bird. I I'm not trying to complain. I, I just was a little confused about, like, the, the things it kept saying. It kept asking for help, and it kept talking about Hitler. And then asking about the Henderson file. Mm, he actually never talked with us. Oh, it talks now. It like it talks nonstop. Like um, it, l last night it 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 admitted that it rigged the uh, the election in favor of Trump. So I don't know if that's the bird saying it or if that's something that you guys taught it to say. Ma'am? Hello? Um, who are you? What, what bird are you talking about? The cockatiel. The one that we got from you guys. No. Yes, I am. What do you mean, no? Which cockatiel? The, 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 the one, the, the grayish one. The, 75 bucks? Got it, you had it on Craigslist. The, the cinnamon pearl slash white. Can you tell me what your name is? Sure, my name is Roy. Okay, well, we didn't sell it to a Roy. I know, you sold it to the... It's, we're a whole family. But it keeps saying... 
it keeps saying that uh, jet fuel can't melt steel beams, and that's kind of weird. That's peculiar. All right, well, like, that's wh- different than what you just told me that he's been Goodbye. saying. No, no, he's saying the th- stuff about the Henderson file, too. <laughs> too. Whatever, goodbye. Hey, you tell that lady to shut the fuck up. I'm not talking to her. You shut the fuck up and don't call this number again. D- don't. No, don't hang up. Don't listen to her. Don't let her control you. Someone someone said I was subleasing the bird. That's why they don't know me. Is that what you said? I, I saw that somewhere. I, yeah, yeah. Totally not a scammer. Should have been like, I have squatter's rights. Uh, 200 Beanie Babies. Wow, I wonder how much. Oh, call me with an offer. (laughs) It says, and the price that they wrote on Craigslist is $1. What a scam. Hey, Bob. How are we doing on that Henderson file? The deadline's fast approaching. We really need to get this locked down. This is a million-dollar account. We don't want to... Hello? Oh, hello? I'm calling about your beanie babies. Pa? I'm calling about your beanie babies on Craigslist. Babies. Beanie babies. Your beanie babies on Craigslist. Oh, the beanie babies? Yeah. The beanie babies. Yeah. Yeah. You still got those? Yeah, I got them. What kind you got? I got like 200 of them. Yeah, but what kind? Can you name them all real quick? It's the ones that first started coming out. Uh, when they first started coming out, uh, my mother would buy one, and I would buy one. Oh. And uh, this this when they first started coming out. When was that? Like, uh, what, 1983? Well, well, they, she'd been dead 10 years. She oh. lived to be 91 and a half. Oh. So, uh do you have I'll Snorla- think the names and the dates on all of them. Do you have Do you have Snorlax? Huh? Do you have Snorlax? Yeah, I was on some, and most calls I got one uh, give me fifty cents a piece for them. I, you must be nuts. We paid five or six dollars for them when they first come out a piece, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I just, you know, I keep them before I give them away. Do you have Jigglypuff? Huh? Jigglypuff. Do you have the one called Jigglypuff? Probably so. We bought them. Uh, Jigglypuff. Old, old. Do you have Jigglypuff? Do you have the Jigglypuff? Dick Diddlypuff? Yeah, Diddlypuff. What, what is it? Uh, I mean, what does it look like? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like all the rest to me. Hell if I know. Thank yeah, you. you know, some of them look like frogs, and some of them look like... Yeah, it uh, looks like a frog. You know, all, all kind of different stuff, you know. Yeah, he, he sings the Jigglypuff song, you know? Yeah. I don't know, I haven't went through them, but I know that we bought them. Yeah. Uh, from the time they come out to... Well, how about uh, $10 for the whole lot? Yeah, you got to be kidding. Okay, 20 20 bucks. No, I know some of them is worth over $1,000 a piece. Okay, $1,000 total. Yeah, because uh, I know a girl that sold one for 800 and then she sold another for 600 So I know they're worth more than any darn, uh, you know, so you're just wasting your time. Uh-uh. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to keep them. No, don't, don't, don't keep them. No, $25. Wow. Just made him or her have a change of heart. I think it was a her. Wow, just hang up on me. <laughs> what? So are Beanie Babies, can you really, like, I don't know, like 800 bucks, really? Still? Here, I'm going to go to eBay. <laughs> Beanie Babies. 
And we're going to do uh, completed listings. $12, $15. Okay, and uh, let's see. Price, um, 500 to 2000 That's That's the range we're looking for. Zero bids, zero bids. I'm not seeing any actual bids on any of these. I don't see any that have actually sold. I see plenty that are listed for 500 bucks. Ah, there's no like option to show just the ones that sold, I don't think. That's what I want to see. Nope, not a single one has sold for 500 bucks. Imagine that. Oh look, I remember that one. <laughs> we had a lot of Beanie Babies too. Okay, um, uh, aircraft propeller blades. Here, you guys vote on what I should try next. Aircraft propeller blades, a bird cage, a Commodore 64. I wonder how much that is. Uh, share house for 100 a week. Large bedroom for rent. Dog sitting. Errands ran. Can oh, need errands ran. Can't help. Home repair handyman. Okay, first vote is Commodore 64. That's what we're doing. It's probably not there anymore, though. And then aircraft propeller blades. Oh, man, people are voting on everything. Don't worry, I'll do them all. Oh, wait, what the hell is this thing? Ah, this, this is not a Commodore I've ever seen before. It, it's, it's a, okay, so it's a, it's a Commodore. If you guys want to look this up on Google, you can see what it is. It's a Commodore SX hyphen 64. S like C, X like Xanax, XS-64. Executive of the first world's, the, the world's first portable color computer released in 1984. Good condition, keyboard, controller ports, tiny screen. <laughs> How would you see anything on that? I guess you can hook it up to a TV though. Uh, they're selling it for $250. And I don't know what to say. Like, what do I say to a Commodore 64 person? Can it run GTA 5? Okay. <laughs> volume control does not work. Unit is stuck on maximum volume, and my god, it is it, is it loud. <laughs> Previous owner modified the unit by installing two toggle switches inside the control panel. Pictured. Oh, I want to see that. Oh, yeah, that's weird. Why'd they do that? <laughs> Greg T. wants me to let him know that the Atari 130XE is better. This person cannot be reached at the moment. Aww. I'll try again. Please don't call. I won't answer an unknown number. Text first. Need to sell it fast. Well, you must not need it too much if you won't even take the call. This person cannot be reached at the moment. Please leave a message after the tone. After you leave a message, you can modify it by pressing pound. Modify it. Oh, hey, I'm calling to buy your Commodore. Can I come by immediately and buy it? I really need it. But I guess you're not going to pick up. Okay, bye. There, I'll make him feel bad about losing a sale. Aircraft propeller blades is next. All right, aircraft propeller blades. Hartzell, Beach, Twins, and others. Oh, he has a bunch. No text, no email. Please see... Phone call info posted. Pair of propeller blades by Hartzell to fit on Beach E55 Twins, several others. Most excellent condition. Party on. Uh, if you have an interest, you may want to read my correspondence with Hartzell Corp. What? <laughs> Why? Um, he says as pictured, but there's no pictures in this listing. Uh... <laughs> I regret jumping wants me to replace the blade in my blender. Mount the blades on the hood of my car. Hello. Hello, I'm calling about your Hartzell Beach blades, propeller blades. Yeah. Yeah. So five hundred and fifty dollars. Some more is new there, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. So for two of them? Yeah, up there yeah, well it's two it takes two to make a propeller. Yeah, I know. I'm not stupid. <laughs> but do I need both of them? Huh? What? Pardon? Like, I, I'm just going to be using them in a blender to make uh, malts with milkshakes. In a what? A blender, like in my kitchen. 
I have a Kenmore blender, and the blade is broken off on it. Like, are these metal blades? Yeah. You're talking about an airplane propeller. I know. It's like it's gonna blend the crap out of stuff. I'm I'm gonna like I've got a Kenmore oh. blender. It's a it's a three F five model. Do you know if it'll fit that? I guess you lost me because this a this, these blades uh, when assembled are about six foot long. Yeah, well I'll shave them down a bit. <laughs> okay, you can you can use them however you want. I'm not dictating that. I'm just saying you just got me by surprise here. I thought somebody I thought somebody with an airplane would be interested in them, you know, because it's probably a five thousand dollar unit on an airplane. Oh yeah, well I have an airplane, but I don't need it for. I've got my propellers are just fine. <laughs> okay, good. I don't have an airplane anymore. I got glaucoma. I don't fly anymore. But uh, uh-huh. I got I got five thousand hours. Do you know? I, I know a little bit about. It. I know a little bit about airplanes, but anyway, you're is, welcome to come have a look at them. They're just they're just Hartzell blades off a of constant speed prop. Yeah. Well, do you know if like um, if I were to use the blades as a ceiling fan, would I need both of the blades, or could I just use one? Well, you'd be out of balance if you use just one. No, because there's it's like just one. It's like you you mean oh you're, you I I thought you meant like they each had like two thingies coming out of them. Okay, yeah, I guess I'll use No, bl- because uh, they they hooked to a they hooked to a hydraulic control unit in in the mm. middle and it controls the pitch. Maybe I could just drill a hole in the middle of the blade and just put that up. Mm, no, that wouldn't that wouldn't work for you. I bet you it would. That wouldn't work for you because what what you've got what you're talking about is a half of a propeller blade, then. Yeah, but if if I cut if I if I put a hole in the middle of that one blade, and just put that up on the ceiling and the ceiling fan. Yeah, my blades are messed up. I, yeah, I don't know. You just have to determine that for yourself, because I don't. I wouldn't know where to go with that. I just. I always use the airplane propellers on airplanes. Yeah, <laughs> I but, don't get a. But yeah, it would be a, it would be a little different. Yeah, my ceiling fan it has a hydraulic control unit on it, so I think it would fit. Huh? I got it from Bed Bath and Beyond on sale. Well, if you got, you know, you could take you could easy guy could take an easy easy take a piece of alum, aluminum pipe and fasten them together, you know. Yeah. And have a whole and have a whole unit. If you just, I, in fact, I was gonna do that and put a. And then put a nose cone on it and just sell it to somebody as a display, you know. Will you uh, sell sell me both blades for twenty five dollars? Sell you two, sell you five hundred and fifty dollars worth of blades for twenty five dollars. Well, no, you said they're worth five thousand. So if if you're willing to lose forty five hundred dollars, then you'd probably be willing to lose another five hundred. No, I said no. I said if you, if you bought a set of blades, if you bought a set of Hartzell blades new, it would cost you probably five thousand dollars. Why don't you sell them for five thousand? I haven't, I haven't bought any. I haven't bought any lately, but I don't get a, I'm sure they're the way things are going up. I even hate to guess at a price, but uh, no, I wouldn't. No, I can hell. If, there's more than twenty five dollars worth of scrap there. How much <laughs> do you think it'd be worth if we scrapped it? Like a hundred dollars? That's what I'm saying. No, there's thirty, thirty pounds, thirty pound, thirty pounds of clean aluminum scrap. I ain't, I ain't about, I'm not about to scrap them. One hundred and twenty-five. No. Do they have? No, that won't get it. If you bring me, I think if you bring me two hundred and fifty dollars, I'd let them out of here. Oh, I'm tired nice. of looking at them. Because just not, not that many people flying anymore, like there were a few years ago. You know, yeah. when, when I was flying, hell, everybody flew an airplane. That's why I want to put them on I my keep, ceiling fan. I used to keep a couple airplanes down at the airport, you know, when they get them. What kind? I did. I flew them and fixed them and rode them for a while and Old sold them, you know. But I'd, 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 I would take two and a half for the pair if you're, if you're really interested in them. Two twenty-five. Because uh, well, no, I'm not, I'm not no. putting them on oh, an airplane. We're net, we're net picking now. I'll take, I'll take two and a half. Uh, two hundred and forty-nine dollars. <laughs> two forty nine. Yeah, I could live with that. 
I'll flip you a coin for, <laughs> for the extra buck. How's that? Okay, thanks. Yeah, because I'm not using them on an airplane. I'm just using them on my ceiling fan in the living room. My, my, I understand that. My, my but kids this, broke the blades. There's still a display item you're talking about, and I, I hadn't thought about anything like that. It's kind of different. I've I sold I've sold propellers for wall displays before and stuff. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna use Never, one. Uh, I'm gonna use one on the ceiling fan and one for the blender. So my kids keep jumping okay, up. Okay, do like, it. Do it. Once a year, you can cut them up in little pieces for as I care. Yeah. I just I just need them out of my shop. I've got too much crap hanging around here anyway. But that's uh that's the price two and a half, and you're welcome to come and get them. Would you take two hundred and forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Two forty eight ninety nine. It too, is. That's, that's too close to that's too close to negotiate over. <laughs> yeah. 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 Penny saved is a penny earned. That's what I always say. Uh, I'm like, uh, you're talking to the guy that'll pick up a penny in the parking lot, you know? Me I too. just don't, uh, I got, I got, I just took $600 worth of them into the bank not too long ago. Whoa. Just, uh, I just did that. I'm, I'm, I'm from old school. I'm 80 years old and I, I can remember when you could buy something with a penny. Have you ever played Fruit Ninja? Anymore, anymore you need a carload of them. Have you ever played Fruit Ninja? No. No. How sharp would you not say that these I can, not, not that I can recall. Are these things made out of metal or they wood? What's that? The, the blades, are they made out of metal? Like they're, well, if they're aluminum, if, they're, if they were wood, I'd be asking 5000 Oh. Because they'd, they'd, be, they'd be antiques and can I get them. Okay, smart ass. These, so, are, very so use, these are very usable propellers uh, for uh, beach aircraft, you know. And somebody out there, somebody out there needs them, but they just hadn't, they just hadn't spotted them on Craigslist yet. Hey, you said you found a penny in the parking lot. Did it have a picture of Lincoln on it? Because I lost one. <laughs> yeah, it does. What, was it 19, okay. 1973? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, it could be mine. You might have taken my penny. Well, I got... I got another collection about to go into the bank, but it ain't as big as the last one. I had such trouble getting rid of them pennies, you wouldn't even believe it. It seems like you should try and contact carried, the the person that lost it. I carried, like I carried bag, I carried bags and bags and bags of pennies in there, and then then they then they waited. They made me wait a week to give me to credit me for them, and they were asking for people to bring pennies in. You know, you know, cause, bastards. Because the government didn't want to make any more, because it cost them more to make them than they're worth. Yeah. No, it's a bunch of stupids. Yep, that's what they are. Do but you you're welcome. To come have a look. These are just regular old Hartzell props. They're con they're constant speed prop blades, and that's all they're all they are is the blades. They're constant speed, that's so I wouldn't be able to use the selector switch on my fan, the chain. You can hook them up however you want. Do you think if I threw like fruits up into the ceiling fan, is it going to slice them? But you you'll have to you'll have to rig that yourself. I know. If I was going to have to do that, I'd have to charge an extra thousand no, dollars. No, I know. I'm not. Yeah. Oh, come on! What are you doing? That you can't help me with that. No, I said no. If I had to go to the labor of doing that, then I could do it. Yeah, you know, we I'm could pretty help. handy man. I could, I, I could, I could build a bracket to put hooker to your ceiling fan. But it's, it takes time. It takes time and machinery and equipment and and uh, and welding know-how and all that kind of stuff. Do you think it'll generate lift in the bedroom? And I have it all. Do you think it would generate lift? I'm just too old to be doing. I'm just too old to be doing it anymore. I'm tired. Can, can I borrow your? Can I borrow your tools? Pardon? Can I borrow your tools? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'll bring, I'll bring them right I back. Have, I have a hundred. I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of tools on my shop. So let me borrow some. No, I'll give them right back. I just I rebuild. I rebuild things and I build trailers and I, you know this and that and the other thing. I'm pretty handy man yeah i'll leave my driver's I build, license i build i build houses and airplanes and boats and everything else well so can i borrow one of your motorcycles, tools motorcycles i do i do vintage motorcycles i have a, i have a, a lot of tool lays and lays and drill presses and welding machines and stuff oh i i could use the drill press can i borrow the drill press pardon can i borrow your drill press I no, i'll just i don't think so like just for a day just i don't like, i don't even i don't even know you I know, but you will after you know after I give you four hundred and forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, what do you got to drill? I'm going to drill a hole in the middle of the propeller to hook up the ceiling fan to the ceiling. Well, I might I might do that once you got it paid for. I've got a couple. I've got a couple of drill presses. Oh, I just oh, so you have not, a couple? Not a, big, like, not a big deal. Could yeah. I just have one? Uh, could I just? You can, but you have to use it in my shop. That's it. They're they're both built into my shop. Do you have a tool to unbolt them and let me borrow it just for a day? They're not bolted to anything. Oh, I thought you said they were. They're free. Do you two have pieces? That's, the props are two pieces. Yeah. No, no, I mean the drill press. The drill presses are probably bolted down to the. To the workbench. Why would I want to unbolt them? So I can borrow them. Can I borrow both? Oh well, no, I'm, no, I don't know. I wouldn't loan. I wouldn't loan. Goodbye. That was eleven minutes. Eleven minutes of talking about propellers and stuff, drill presses, pennies. All the pin. Like, how does he have six hundred dollars in pennies? Where do you even get that? Like, he just got $600 in pennies, cashed in, and now he has more? Well, like, where is he getting them all? Who has that many pennies? Like, how do you generate that many pennies? Just walks around in parking lots and scrounges for pennies, I guess. Because the damn government, they want all their pennies back. Is the government really calling for people to, to bring all their pennies in because they can't afford to make new pennies? Is that true? I don't think that's true, is it? That can't be true. One hundred dollars. Share a house for one hundred week. One hundred weeks. Someone needing a room with full access. Call me. Your call has been forwarded ah. to an automated. Bo- I'm, I'm going to have a face paint. I'm going to have a painting party. A body painting party. Private shower. Sixty-three inch flat screen TV. Your call has been forwarded. They're hitting the fuck you button. Couch, recliner, internet, kitchen, everything to cook and eat with refrigerator. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> There's a refrigerator. And then in, in all caps, the last sentence says, very quiet here and love it like that and love it like that. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice message. Please call. God bless you. All caps. Have I really been doing two and a half hour of show? What the hell? Why am I doing this? I'm just going to have a shitload to edit now. Whoa, that's a big bird cage. It's like three or four, four feet tall. $30. Large bird cage for sale. Please call me. <laughs> yes, a five-year-old can fit in the cage. Totally not a scammer. This is a big cage. I don't know if I should say that, though. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm calling about the bird cage. Uh, yes, sir. Um, is that still available? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, and I have a large dog. Um, do you think, like I'm looking at the picture, it looks like he could probably fit in there, but I don't know if the door is you big want... enough. Did you say the dog or the, the bird? The dog. I've got a dog I want to put in this, inside this bird cage. No, they don't. They, I don't think they're thick in there. <laughs> yeah, I could do it though. I think like if he squeezes in that door, because it's it looks like a big door. Mm, yeah, but the dog, it's big dog. You have to get the dog cage. You know, that's a bird. Yeah, but you know, like it, it's a big bird cage. I think the dog would fit in it. Uh, that's like the big, but they're tall more than the wide. You know. Yeah, but you know, my my dog's a professional contortionist. Uh huh. So, uh, so I think I think it'd be fine. I I don't know if if you want it, you can have him. You know, you can get him. But okay, but do you think the dog would fit? Like, it's hard to see the the door in this picture. I don't think the dog fit in there. You know. Oh come on! Yeah, the big dog or the little dog? It's a big dog. It's so big. It, like no, if it, if it stands up on its leg, it's bigger than me. It's a Great Dane. Oh, law. You know it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. Hey, who's that in the background? Can you tell them to shut up? Tell them to, Who? Whoever that is in the it's background. my customer. My customer. Oh, can I talk to the customer quickly? I'll just, I'll tell them. It's fine. I'll just talk to the customer real quick. No. I'm going to tell them to shut up. 
I am I think I'm wrong to you. Okay, um does the Bye. does the door hold on, I have a question. I have a question. Does the door require thumbs to open? I think I'm wrong to you. You think what? Bye. No, I need to know about thumbs. No. Will will the cage con will the cage contain my dog's cries for help? Aw. That was Tim Riggies and I regret jumping. I'm going to put them in there in pieces. Wow, Greg. What the hell? Guess we're going to do these remaining eight or so things. The first one's for a personal trainer. If you're in search of a judgment-free zone environment, is he stealing that from Planet Fitness? This doesn't look like a Planet Fitness thing. It looks like just some guy. Uh, look no further. I can promise you that this is not another gimmick that you may have seen slash heard of. I've honestly been known as the cheapest around while getting great results. It also comes with structured meal plans to help you along with your goals. I absolutely love to help people. Program is not only to become physically in shape, it's to become mentally and emotional fit also. So he's going to be your counselor or something? <laughs> uh, yeah. Questions? Feel free to call, text, email. Check out my prices through the images. Let's make this happen. You said 2018 was your year, so what are you waiting for? P.S. Ask me how you can get a free session. Pretty sure this is all code for he's a prostitute. Hello? Hey there. I was calling about your judgment-free zone affordable rate thing here on Craigslist. Yes. Yep. Is that still available? Yes, sir, it is. And how much is that per hour? Um, I charge 30 per hour. Or I have three different plans. I have 30 per hour or 30 per session or $70 a month or I have a 90-day transformation for 100 oh, A month. I don't know. Well, does the $30 per hour, does that include full penetration? Penetration? Yes. Okay, great. Great. That sounds good. Yes, sir. Um, and you're not a cop, right? No, I'm not a cop. <laughs> okay, all right. Because, like, uh, you know, if I if I ask you that, you have to answer honestly. So, so okay. does it? How's it work? Do I just um, like uh, cash only? I assume. Do I just kind of leave it there on the bedside? I'm not sure what you're talking about. This is a personal trainer. Yeah, yeah, a personal trainer. Wink, wink. I I understand the lingo. I I get it. It's Craigslist. This isn't my no, first I don't rodeo. Understand your lingo. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't follow what you're saying. I'm a, a personal trainer. Yeah. Yep. A personal trainer with air quotes. No um, quotes. Have you been tested for STDs? Uh, I think you have a number. I'm not. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I'm no, a personal you, trainer. You have it here on on Craigslist. Uh, toning. You you have all the the key code words. Cardiovascular. No code words. I'm a professional business man. I don't know what you're referring to. Is business man like a role playing thing? No, I'm a personal attorney slash attorney. Slash attorney? Yes. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't sound that exciting, really. It's not. It's but not exciting. We don't have to do role playing. Just, just straight sex is what I'm looking for. Okay, hold on. Let me put you on speakerphone so we can talk. Okay. Why do I have to be on speaker? Is somebody there? Because you're you're talking to an attorney at the moment, and you're not being professional. So I have to, everything you're saying could be recorded. Oh, I don't want to be recorded. Cause, no, nope. I I like to just keep things discreet. Are we are we gonna? Okay. Said so he's gonna put me on speaker and hangs up. That's how it works. All right. I want your collectibles. Other people's junk is other people's treasure. Do you know what it might do you know what might be in your attic, basement, shed, garage, barn, or even a junk box? I'm looking for antiques, collectibles, pre-1965 silver coins, scrap gold, rare pre-1970 comics, rare books. Oh yeah, basically it's like yeah, a bunch of antique store stuff. Dollar bills old shit 
He has a bunch of pictures of things he might be interested in taking. What do I say to this guy, though? Oh, wow. He wants old iPhones <laughs> and old laptops. What is this, like a pawn shop? <laughs> Tim Riggy wants me to say I have a Lincoln penny. How about I have a Lincoln penny and he only has three legs? 200 beanie babies. <laughs> Offer garbage from your trash cans that they can paw through for $200. Hello. Hey, I was calling about your Craigslist ad where you're just buying old crap. No, well, I'm not buying crap. I'm buying good stuff. Hopefully that's what you have. Well, what do you have? It says collectibles. Um, like I have three trash cans out behind my garage. I'll let you root through them for about, I don't know, 100 bucks a can. Well, I mean, what is, what's in them? Uh, trash bags full of, I don't know, kitchen stuff, banana peels. See, here's what I'm looking like, for. I'm looking for collectibles. <laughs> okay. Oh, so, like dollars. What, did you, what, did you, what ad was you looking at? Uh, well, it says I want your collectibles, and then it has a picture of a bunch of yeah. I mean, like, like you want iPhones. Old banana, did you say old banana peels? Well, it's just our trash cans out behind the garage. Yeah, well, I mean, and there's actual trash inside of them. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know, it's just yeah, like but, kitchen trash. Why would I want to go tra- through your trash? Trash from the bathroom. Well, that, it's, yeah, it seemed, help you. But, well, you wrote right here, is this? other people's junk is other people's treasure, and this is junk. It's my treasure. Right, and well, you know, you have to use common sense when, stuff, when you're looking at stuff like that. Old oh, banana peels and your garbage is not something I'm looking for. What, do you call me stupid? But, uh, well, who is this? Uh, my name is Roy. Do I know you? No, no, I don't know you. I just, I saw your ad here. I live here in Tupelo, and I just well, thought, you, know, you can't even say Tupelo? That's what I said. You just misunderstood me. I think your phone's breaking up. Okay. I think it might have been yours. Yeah. No, if you think, think I'm going to go through your garbage, yeah, that's, that's, that's you know, not something I do. Well, it just it looks I'm from, looking for from, from the ad. I can turn around and resell. looks like to, that's what you do. You just go through people's trash. and You said right here. Dude, use your head. Other people's <laughs> junk is other people's treasure. That's what you wrote. Yeah, but you got to use common sense for that. So, yeah, I guess I am calling you dumb. Bye. Hey. Hey, Ooh. not cool. A mean person. Should have told her, like, if she digs down really deep, I put some silver coins or something down there. PLA coins, that's what it is. Here's something for steel beams. I wonder if they know, uh, like, what it takes to melt them if I use jet fuel. I have two steel eye beams that are 34 foot long. Height is 16 f- inches. Wait. Yeah, 16 inches thickness. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, Seven inches wide. Great for large span areas such as a shop or bridge beams. $300 each. Delivery available at $3 per loaded mile from from here. Um, or I can load it into your trailer. You can call or text me. Hello? Hello, I was calling about those steel beams that you have. Okay. It says they're well. It says in the title that they're a thousand dollars, but then it says they're three hundred in the description. Yeah. So which is it? I don't know how it done that. Oh yeah, I'm sure it was Craigslist's fault. No, it was probably my wife. Ah, oh, <laughs> fucking wives. Yeah. Well, no, man, I know. I'd take 300 for them. Okay, 300. It's not 1,000. That's better. Yeah. Um, so you deliver them? Uh, yeah, I can. Do you know, like, um, can they be melted by jet fuel? I have no idea. You never tried? Mm-mm. Wow. So you don't know much about the product, I guess? I don't know if they can be melted by jet fuel. Um, so like my ex-wife, um, well, I mean, ex-wife to be, we're in the middle of a nasty divorce proceedings. Um, I was want to know, like, can you just take a steel beam and I want you to deliver it to her house and just put it in the front lawn? 
Just leave it there? <laughs> no, I'll probably better not do that. No, it's cool. I mean, I'll pay for it. I'll prepay and everything. She, she's just, you know, she's got it coming. She's, she's being a pain in the ass to me. And, like, if you just put that out there and then she's got to deal with it. She's just got this big thing in her front lawn. Uh, well, a lot of things come to mind. I got some ex wives. Drop a tank in their yard. You what? I'd like to drop a tank in their yard sometime. Yeah, yeah, you should. If you have one to dump. No, but this well, way it can't be one. traced back to me if you're doing it. It's like I, I just want her to come home one day and then there's a big steel beam in the yard, 34 foot long steel beam. Like maybe prop it up on the porch or something. So she can't even get up the stairs Man, properly? Man, this thing weighs about a thousand pounds. How probably you, more than that. How do you load it up? With a hoist. So you have a hoist and everything? Yeah, but I don't have I don't have one to unload it. The only way I can unload it is roll it off. But, man, I ain't supposed to come up there and roll this thing off in some, old, some guy's yard. I'll come with you. I'll help you. <laughs> no. You know what else weighs a thousand pounds? My my soon to be ex wife. Well, God bless her. Yeah, but she deserves this. I mean, she's being a total bitch in court. Well, come on. All I can say, man, is sounds like you're pretty resentful. Yeah, yeah. You and know, it's divorce. It happens. Well, pray for. Her. No, no, no. I want to put some. I want to put shit in her yard, and I'm willing to pay. Well, like, I'll pay four hundred bucks if you de- if you deliver it to her house. You'd be a lot better off to pray for. No, no. Fuck that shit. Because that's what's that going to accomplish? It's going well. I got a, I got an ex wife that I was resentful at for a long time, and I started praying for her on, under the advice of a friend, uh-huh. and before I knew it, within about a week. When you pray for somebody, you can't stay mad at them. They're just it, you just can't do it. And before you know it, you ain't mad no more. Yeah, I'll be a lot less mad. Like if I can just put a steel beam in her yard, and and she's she's got to <laughs> deal with it. Like that'll make me less mad. Because I'll be like, I got that bitch. Well, like me, like what if we have it? Like it, it's thirty four foot long. Like we could like just put it up there on the porch and then just lay it out into the street. So then she'll get in trouble by the city. For having a big steel beam like sticking out into the street, man. Do you know how much trouble I'm always in anyway? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like, if you want to do some sort of a trade, like I'll fuck with your ex-wives. If you fuck with my ex-wife, no, I ain't mad at mine no more. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like I'm, I'm. You were like, yeah, but that's been fifteen years ago. Yeah, so she won't even suspect it's you. You can get her back good. <laughs> oh yeah, she would. <laughs> Think of all the shitty things she did to you. Well, come on. I probably better not. Come on. Nah. I'm. I have enough trouble. I don't need to invite any. Yeah, you won't get in trouble though. Like I, I know her schedule, so she's not going to see us. Or we could just do it in the middle of the night. I'll come out there with you. I'll help you. I'll, I'll we'll, we'll use. No, man, I ain't. I ain't gonna do that. God damn it! Like, what else could I do? Really, I'm trying to find big things on. Like, I, I'm. I'm gonna have a hot tub delivered to her house. This one guy was selling a hot tub, so I paid him with PayPal, and he's gonna bring it over tomorrow. But I want to put like a bunch of heavy junk in her yard that she can't move. Man, I don't know what to tell you. Buy your old 18 wheeler trailer and get it back up in there and let them unhook and drive off. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but wait, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I better hush. Nothing. No, no, it's <laughs> cool. Go ahead and tell me, what was it? I said, buy you an old 18 wheeler trailer and back it in there and unhook from it and go. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Cause some, but someone could just bring a truck in and like haul it away. Oh, yeah. You know. I guess so. Yeah. 
Well, man, I'm going to get off here, and I'm going to wish you luck, but Thanks. I ain't going to come up there and do that. Well, shit. Okay, I'll just find something else to do to her. She, she's All got, right. She's got hers coming. I'm going to pray that I can find something on Craigslist to leave in her yard. That's what I'm well, going to do. Maybe, maybe good Lord will answer that prayer. I don't know, but I you hope, have a good day. I hope he does. Okay, thanks. Have a good day, sir. You too. Goodbye. All right, 24 days ago this was posted. Yorkies, Morkies, and Labradoodle. I have CKC registered Yorkies, Morkies, and a Labradoodle. Baby available for forever homes. Please contact me for details via text or call. Uh, they are all UTD on shots and worming. They are extra tiny babies and will remain under thir thir uh, three pounds. Labradoodle should be around 60 pounds at maturity. These babies are raised inside my home and given extra love and attention and excellent care. Thanks for interest, but only serious, serious inquiries, please. I should get that um, sound effect sound effect that XYZ uses of, of like kicking a dog or whatever. <laughs> Be like, yeah, yeah, I'm abusing those dogs you sold me. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. But tee hee, wouldn't that be hilarious? Yeah, so those these are these um, tiny, annoying little dogs that people like to uh, carry with them into the grocery stores and stuff because that's totally okay. Hello? Ah, Jesus Christ, that was loud. Hey, I'm calling about those uh, dogs that you have on Craigslist. Which one? The Yorkies. I have one Yorkie left. Okay. But here's She's a, a really tiny little female. Mm hmm He is? That's all, that's all that I have right now. Well, no, I'm I'm actually the one that brought I, I we we my family came in we bought the other one, the other one you know we're, we're the ones that bought it from you the other Yorkie, recently. That was us. No. no. Uh huh. That was me. My, my aunt bought a Yorkie from me, but I only had two Yorkies, but, and I've got one, and she's got the other. Not the Yorkie, the Morky. Oh, okay. Which Morky did you buy? The the. The, um, the um the he he's like black on top and brown paws and brown face and he's very small you know what you what you name what's your name uh this is roy mm. we're we're the ones that no. we're going to train him to to sniff out um bombs and drugs and stuff Nope. We call, Wrong person. We, we, we call him Adolf. We changed his name to Adolf. Well, you don't train Morkies to sniff out bombs. Most people don't, but we're, we're going to do something special with this one. We're going to train him to sniff out drugs and bombs and help find lost children and stuff like that. We've been working hard at this, yeah. and it's going... It's going have any problem sniffing out drugs there's probably some real close it seems like oh really <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say lady <laughs> that was a good one wasn't it <laughs> you seemed to be really good there Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I have to admit, though, you're, you, you're spot on. <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't have any Yorkies or anything, but I've got a Yorkie. If you want to buy her, she's $1,500. Oh, no. No, fuck that shit. I, I already bought the Morky from you. We, we bought that one Morky, remember? No. Nope. Because I know everybody that I bought, I sold to, and I didn't sell anything to nobody named Roy. Yeah, but no, they they sold it to me. Like they, they I'm just subleasing. Okay. I'm subleasing. Well, she just the Norky. <laughs> she just talked to me this morning about the black and tan one, so I don't think so. Yeah, I told her to call you to to like just throw you off the trail. We don't want you to be suspicious and think that. 
Okay. That, that, well, good, that, good luck with your um, uh, drug sniffing. I think you you probably got some. You could probably train them good drug sniffing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got lots of experience sniffing those drugs. So I, I can show them exactly how to do it. Okay. Well, I got to go. I don't have time for crackheads. I got work to do. I don't so do I'll crack. Talk to you later. I, I don't do crack, ma'am. I use, I use real drugs. Okay. <laughs> I, I use the cool drugs. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with that. Um, I hope you what, what do you have get left? some help. So how much for the Yorkie, though? I told you she's 1500 But it only lasts... Okay, so, like, I'm a model rocket enthusiast, and I want to hook it up to a model rocket and shoot it into the atmos- into the troposphere. Like, do you, okay. think, do you think that would work? Like, how how heavy is it? She's one pound. That's perfect. You, I can put a one pound payload on this thing. Is what the the box says. Okay. I'm gonna shoot it up, shoot it up into the sky. That's not well, a. Bring drug. me the money for it. All right. As long as you're okay with that, it's gonna happen. All right. Could you hang? Bring up, it on. Could you hang up the phone? Hello? Could you hang up the phone? Just hang it up. Hang it up right now. You better hang it up. Did you hang it up? Ma'am? Ma'am? Oh, hey, you're back. What you doing? Hey, you want to get together, you know, sometime soon and use some drugs? We could sniff some drugs. We could pretend we're drug dogs and sniff the drugs together. What are you doing? Talking to my husband about how retarded you are. (laughs) Retarded? You can't use the R word in 2018. It's not allowed anymore. I think I can use whatever word I need to. Oh, you're not supposed to, though. Like, they, they've they, they've said to stop, to, to cut that out. I don't care what they said. Anyway, you want to, you know, maybe sniff some drugs together? Pretend we're drug dogs? No, thank you. All right. Are you really talking to your husband? Like, because I don't hear any talking. Are you texting him, you mean? He's sitting right here beside him. He's really quiet. Well, he, said to hang up the, he said to hang up the dumb phone. <laughs> he said to what? Hang up the dumb phone. Oh, to, don't tell him not to use the D word. It's not cool to use the D word anymore. It's 2018. You know? Not cool, ma'am. Not cool at all. Wow, she was kind of awesome. <laughs> I loved how how amused she was with herself for the drug comment. So that one didn't work out. Uh, next, we have a Hooker Entertainment Center for five hundred dollars. Downsizing. What a horrible movie. Um, selling a Hooker Cherry Entertainment Center that is quite versatile. It can. It can, oh man, I can't see this. It can be used as a single one piece, or you can use the center as one piece and connect the two end sections to make it a separate piece of furniture. Beautiful furniture. Has glass shelves, down lights, blah, 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 electrical outlet on top. So it's one of those huge, gigantic entertainment center things. And you open it up, and there's a space for a uh, not a widescreen TV. Only square TVs. <laughs> so, yep, I'm calling about the hooker. I guess the brand name is Hooker. Serious inquiries only. 
Why does anyone write that? Serious inquiries only. Like that's kind of strange. It's five hundred dollars. Tim Riggy wants me to say that I'm homeless and I want to use it as a house. Converted into a Japanese nightclub. How much to rent? You know how much how much for an hour? Hello? Hi, I was calling about the hooker for $500. For the what? The hooker. You put it on what Craigslist? <laughs> what? She's hung up. Come on. She must be a really good hooker. Hello? Hey, uh, we got disconnected somehow. I'm, I'm sorry, I was calling about this. Uh, you have it here on Craigslist for $500? For $500? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The entertainment unit. Uh, yes, sir. I still have it. Do you want to call I'm her? I'm sorry. I, I've got two kids here, so I'm babysitting my grandkids today. Oh, did one of them hang up the phone? Uh, what jerks? Probably. Yeah. Probably. So yeah, I still have it. Um, are you from Tupelo? Yep, yep. I'm here in, uh, yep, here in Tupelo. That's how you pronounce okay. it. Yes, yes, in Tupelo. Mm -hmm. Yep, Tupelo. Um, so, like, it's $500, is that just for, like, one hour? Oh, my God, tell that kid in the back. Oh, she, she gets what I'm doing. She's just hanging up. She's no dummy. I guess the kid hung up the phone again. Last one, baby goats. There they are. Those sure are baby goats. They're so cute. They're feeding them with a bottle. <laughs> Tim Riggy wants me to uh, rent the goats because I want to trick my kids into thinking they get them on Easter morning. Is that this Sunday? Is Easter this Sunday? It's Clint Insel. I'm sorry I can't come Aww. to the phone. Come on. It's Clint Insel. I'm sorry I can't come to the phone right now. Clint can't come to the phone right now. That sucks. What a bummer. I think before we leave, I got to try one more quick thing. I want to try one last attempt at um, calling Bob Murphy. Bob Murphy. So let's see if I can dial the number properly this time and not scare everyone again into thinking that Bob Murphy's dead. I'm sorry about that, everyone. But basically, I brought him back from the dead. I made you guys think he was dead, and then I'm like, nope. Bob Murphy's alive. Hello. Hi, is Bob around? Yes, may I tell him who's calling? Sure, this is Dave from the Homeowners Association. Okay, just a moment, Dave. Okay. Oh my gosh. What do Dave I do? Dave from the Homeowners Association. Hi. Hey, Bob. Hi. Hey, Bob. Hey. Uh, it's, it's Roy from the Homeowners Association. She said Dave, I think, didn't she? Yeah. That was weird. She must have misheard me. Who's Roy? I, I get, don't know who Roy is. Uh, I'm I'm with the homeowners association. What is that? You, you know the landing. The landing. Oh, the landings. Is there such a thing? Well, you know, it's the same. Uh, we just call it that, just to sound more important, basically. Is it the association? Yeah. Yep. It's oh. Like, okay. I know the landings association. I don't know the homeowners association. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. We just call it that. You know, we're we're trying to we're rebranding. Who calls it that? We do here at the here at the landing. That's what we call and it. You and I do. Well, no, we do here. We're, we're like you know, it's us, us here at the landing, not you. Uh, I'm at the landings. I know, but I'm saying us here in the office. Oh, in the office. Yeah, oh. der. Come on, Bob. Well, it'll be good if you let us know who you're talking about. Okay, what are you calling about? Um. So there, there's. Uh, we're digging tunnels underneath the houses here in the landing area. We're going to be digging a tunnel directly under your house. You're kidding. And we just needed to let you know about that. You might hear digging sounds coming from underneath. You, what are you talking about? This is Bob Murphy, right? Because, like, you don't sound exactly like Bob Murphy. What address do you have? Um, Lane. That's about six years old. Oh, is it? You've moved. Yeah. But you still live here at the landing, right? I do, but we, your records, I can't imagine you, you're calling from the landings and your records are that bad. We need to update our records, I guess. 
I would guess so. Why are you Crud. digging a tunnel under my old house? Um, because of, you know, the incident. What incident? You know, the incident. The, the one, the, the thing that happened a couple of years ago. No, I don't. Okay, well, maybe you just don't need to know about it, but... Um, I guess, I guess if you've moved, we don't even need need to really tell you about it. We're we're, we're digging a hole underneath. We're digging a tunnel directly underneath your house. It's going to be uh, to go from the office to uh, the other location. The office. Yeah. What the association office? Yeah, the association. That's a long ways. Yeah, but it's cool. Like this, this is just where how it's going to be done. That's a quarter mile. So what? It, we, we're practically, we're almost there. Like it's gonna, we're gonna start the digging underneath your house, like within a couple of days. So you don't own this it. For an es- this an escape route or something, brother? Not an escape okay, route. Okay, well, just like goodbye. A, wait, don't, Bob. Wait. What? You don't need to talk to me. Yes, yes, I do. Like, like, Why? I, you don't still own the house, do you? No. How do I know this is really Bob Murphy? Because you don't really sound anything like the Bob Murphy that I know. Who do you know? Well, I've heard you, like, can you state your name loudly and clearly, just to confirm that this is you? Robert Murphy. No, no, I didn't say Robert. You I know, it. that's my name, Robert H. Murphy. I live, I do not live at <laughs> Lane anymore. Well, I know that now, I'm updating the records, but no, can, like, can you, can you say it like you mean it, though? Can you yell out? There's another Robert Murphy who lives over on Pineside. Oh no, you're the same one. You're, you're like I think you're the same one. We we only why have. Why would you? Why would you know me? Well, no, I just because I know everyone, and we we drive by and we <laughs> keep an eye on everyone, and like I don't know. What's your that. position at the association? Uh, I work here in the security room. In security. Yeah, the big bank. You mean of, at the front gate. Well, no, no, I'm in the back office. We have like a wall of monitors and, you know, we have the cameras set up all over the association, all over the landing. That's not the gate? No, not the gate. No, no, I'm in, in the actual office. Like there's actual a, office. There's a back room and I sit in the room that has the big bank of monitors on the wall. And how do you know Bob Murphy? Um, because, well, we're digging the hole. It's going to be directly underneath. <laughs> under, under my old house. Yeah. But you kept no. saying Robert Murphy, though, and we know you as Bob. Like, that's what we have you in the directory as is Bob. I know, because when I joined the club, there was already a Robert Murphy, so they put me down as Bob H. Murphy. Hmm. What's the H stand for? Uh, Henry. Okay. Oh, can, can I come clean with you? Sure. I, I'm calling from the 100.3 The Gerbil FM. It, it's a radio show. Oh, it and, is? And, yeah, really, we, I just wanted you to, to do a drop for me. Can, can you say, can you just say, this is Bob Murphy, and you're listening to the Snowplow Show? No. Come on, please, Bob. No, I'm done with this. <laughs> please, Goodbye. no, Bob, Bob, Bob. Whoever said that in the chat room, you ruined it. Not, not that it was going anywhere. Going anywhere. Oh, hello, Bob. Oh, no, it was just hanging up. I wasn't expecting him to answer, so I had, like, nothing prepared. Like, where am I going with this? It's Tim Riggie's fault. That's who it is, everyone. Everybody hate Tim Riggie. No, it's not your fault. That would have been great if he'd done it. If he'd done a drop for us. Maybe if I send him 20 bucks. Maybe Nancy will do it. Or, I mean, Janet, not Nancy. <laughs> Janet. Hello? Janet. It's it's Roy from uh, 100.3 The Gerbil, 100.3 FM, the radio station. Oh, okay. Can can you just do a, a quick drop for us? We need it. We're going to play it on the air. You're going to be on the radio. Just say this oh, is I... this is Bob Murphy's wife, and you're listening to the Snowplow Show. No, thank you. Come on, please. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it, Janet. Balls, balls, balls. <laughs> I tried, I guess. Yeah, it was. Tim Riggie says it was still pretty great. Or really great, I guess. I wonder why they don't have their voicemail anymore, though, that says Bob Murphy. It's just like a... No, I'm not going to call him back once a month. <laughs> Six-week tenure. I'm not going to turn him into the next Mildred Monday. 
It sucks that he moved. Maybe that's why the the voicemail changed. They moved. They just bought one of those new answering machines at their new house. It was him. I regret jumping. It was totally him. Anyway, I guess that's the end of today's show. Thanks, everyone, for hanging around for three and a half hours. Now I get to edit three and a half hours of show. Edit it down to like one hour. I think that's about the amount of good stuff that happened today. Thanks for all the ideas, chat room. Lots of fun. All right, bye. Hey, this is a mixture. I'm Chupacabra's wife. Listen, bro. My husband won't shut up about you. I don't Thank know your what bro. you're doing over there, but Chief. you're ruining my prank calling. He's wanting me to prank call all the time. It's ruining it for me. Divorce. Uh, I rec- all right. I Keep recommend on doing what you're doing, I guess. But you're ruining it for me. I recommend divorce. Divorce him immediately. You're welcome for the advice. Hey, Brad. This is Micro Corgi. Hey. Uh, good to hear that you had some fun with the. Uh, the Cactus uh, Mobile Home Sales. Yeah. I figured you'd like that one. Thanks. Um, I'm looking to gather some more numbers for you. Hopefully get those together pretty soon. Uh, maybe even some trailer park stuff. Those are always really cool. Um, I also want to see if I, I can make a song at some point. I keep trying to do it, but I'm a lazy hobo, and I guess that's never going to happen. Oh, well. So, uh, Cactus Cactus, love the show. Thanks, Micro Corgi. Hey, Brad. It's Trooper Cabra. Just wanted to give you a little heads up on a cool little bit my wife's been working on. She likes to call up liquor stores and say that, uh, you know, she got a little bit of a problem that uh, she bought a bottle from them and now she needs an alibi. So uh, usually they've been having some pretty interesting responses. Maybe it's something you could work on. Okay. Thanks, Brad. We'll talk to you later. I do have a giant list of liquor stores from I Regret Jumping that I need to work on soon. Holy crap, Brad. I'm listening to the latest... uh voicemail or uh, not voicemail but show uh mm-hmm. the free water for free oh yep. uh, this is mr taco by the way the i real know mr. taco yep. anyway uh i was listening okay. to that the last uh last call you did where you're talking about lady and you ended up butt slamming her at the end i don't think i've ever heard someone so like inside oh the really long one i know which one you're talking about like she was so angry you like totally got her goat <laughs> I loved it. It's probably anyway, still pissed. Keep it the good work. All right. Probably every single day of work since that day has been really easy for her. I've made her appreciate the easiness of her job. Brad, Brad. Oh, yay. Brad, Brad. Oh, hi, Brad. Hey. I was on your uh, website the other day, and That's I nice. just got this kid. I was like, I was like, just, uh, I went on your website, and, and, and then now there's somebody, now I've just been this kid. I wonder what, I wonder what happened. And there's another thing, it's, it's weird. When I was looking on your uh, web, web, website, it's all, it was all in foreign. It was all uh, in Spanish. There's one done, wait a minute, what's going on here? What do you hate, what do you hate Spanish people for? I that's wrong with my computer. But uh, that's weird. I've just been siskied on, on your wee thing. So just saying to people to be careful. Okay. April Fools. Oh, crap. I hope you, I hope you have a good April, everybody. And... None of, none of that was I was true. so concerned. A load of knobby horse manure. Oh, Bye. man. What a plonker you are. You fooled us a good one. And it's several days before April 1st, so we were totally not expecting that at all. Brad. Hey. Hey. Um, hope you're having a great day. It's the best day ever. on the shows. I just wanted to let you know think that pussy good, pussy sweet, pussy good enough to eat music as much as you should. There's been a few opportunities, but I feel like, you know, you forget. It's understandable that you're in the middle of a call. Um, and also, can you butt slam people more often? You have that great, well, a bunch of great sounds to do it. And sometimes when you butt slam people, their reaction to finding out they've been acting all stupid is, like, almost as good as the whole call itself. Yeah. When you do it, it's great. When you don't do it, that a whole lot. Everybody do it, you it up. I'll yeah, try it. to do that more often. If you do those two things, I'd be very happy. All right. Big voice. Away. Yeah, that lady on the end of the last show, she was pretty pissed about the being butt slammed. Hi, Brad. After 20 this minutes. Court from Tally. Hey. I don't know if, it, if you've noticed this, but what? there's been a surprising amount of political discourse on the Phone Losers Facebook page. You don't say. Something that I personally am opposed to. But anyway, um, it turns out that You're the one reporting all the political posts. And a Mr. Sikowski are going to be coming up with some sort of economics uh, debate, because that's the kind of thing that you 
do on the phone, which is America, Thanks for bringing right? politics to my voicemails. I would like to make things a little bit interesting. I say, if I win the debate, according to the moderators... Yeah, debates are always interesting. ...then there will be no more political posts allowed on the Phone Losers Facebook page. Mm-hmm. That would just make me happy. I'm tired of the political posts. I'm sorry. This is my refuge, Brad. All right, bye. I do delete them when, when they have nothing to do with anything else. I mean, some of them get through, but I try to keep it under control. I do my best. I don't want politics there either. Hey, Brad. Uh... You had that mistake a couple weeks ago where uh, it put all the Brass Texas Shack onto the main feed. But yeah. It's kind of nice because I never heard those before. And I so did it again. Like the ones where you go into like the history and some of the older pranks you did, which is kind of like the, the old phone show you used to do, which I really enjoyed. The yeah. best part about it, no fucking voicemail. Not yet. Give it time, though. I'm sure I'll start putting voicemails on there eventually. And I am sorry, everyone. I did that again. I syndicated the Mr. Dabalina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls onto the Phone Losers feed. And this time I set it up so I would have to manually approve every post. And it wouldn't happen again. There's no way it would happen again. And it happened again anyway. I don't know why, but everybody got 15 brand new posts if they're subscribed to the phonelosers.org feed. Sorry about that, but, you know, everything's done now. I'm not going to be syndicating anything more onto that feed. It's all finished. It's the last time it'll happen for real this time. Until I, like, update the plug-in and it does it again for some reason. Handsome Brad. It's Steven Aspenwall. And I'm here to call. I want to let you know that you're a bancho. And you've got a mama boot fart. What? I forgot what I was going to say. Bye. The poop fart was pretty Bye. cool, though, I guess. Thanks, Stephen Aspinwall. I think you're a smarty. I'm not a smarty. You're a smarty. Listen to the hobo souls. Liz Darwin, she got to make some new music, man. I love her. Good morning. Radio Shack. Let's do a song for Toys R Us. Yeah. A song for Sears. Yeah, come on, Liz She's Darwin. Listen, she got to get back. She's the best uh, musician we got. Get to work, Liz Darwin. Come on, babe. Don't forget the Dean Timber song she did for us. That was pretty amazing. Hey, Roy, it's Lard Lord. Hey. Uh, just to let you know, the HOA setting up a refugee camp in a resident's yard, that's fucking gold, man. <laughs> gold. Thanks. And if you don't believe me... I didn't come up with it. That was a listener's idea from a couple years ago. If you still don't believe me, I've killed better Chinese than you. Yeah, I bet you have. I should have saved that guy's number. Hey, Brad. It's Will again. Hey, Will. Um, I just want to give you a quick comment because, believe it or not, man, I spent the past, like, two and a half hours doing prank calls with a bunch of people here in this apartment. Where there's, like, there's literally, like, 20 of us. That's and we're crazy. Just all around, laughing around, and uh, I was calling up random apartments over in California, and I was just basically saying, like, hey, you know, what's your, what's your pet thing? You know, I've got a pet here. I've got a skunk, you know, chat everywhere. And uh, I wouldn't give them my number because I was afraid that they would, you know, charge me a pet fee. But uh, anyways, Brad, man, that. you're just always an inspiration. Always a, always a go-getter. You know, God, I love it. And so, Thanks. Uh, take it easy, my own brain. I'm glad I'm inspiring you to be a pain in the ass to other people. Okay, look forward to Snowplow 452. So I was watching, I've been watching, like, I've been going deep into the Phone Loser YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. By the way, it's 3 a.m. Because I know I always stay at the time. Nice, but anyways, nice. and, you know, I'm looking at these video pranks on that playlist you got, and holy shit, these things are so fucking 90s. It's ridiculous. Do you ever, or like, Thanks. like, you ever look back at these videos and go like, what the hell was I thinking? Oh, or yeah. That, like, I'm, I'm, like, those glasses that you got in the Taco Bell video that I, that I'm, that I saw. <laughs> holy shit. I know that's probably not 90s because I see it really... Like, that was early 2000s. Lincoln Town Car in the back, but still, it's fucking night. Like, what the hell? I anyway. just have dorky glasses, right, okay? well, you have yourself a great day. Thanks for, thanks for playing my voicemail. Sure. Bye. I love you. I still wear those glasses. No, just kidding. But yeah, some of that 90s stuff, it doesn't hold up too well today. I just want to praise Henrik's music because it's the best, and I got a weird random number... It's all right. That texted me today, and then after we figured out that it was the wrong number, he started plugging me all his websites, so I started plugging all the phone loser websites back to him. 
Okay. I was wondering, That's weird. if I called in with, with a beige box, would you be able to tell? I'm going to my grandparents' house soon, and they have a landline, so I think I'm going to call in, in beige box. All right, bye. Okay, do it. I don't know how I would be able to tell unless you just told me, and that'd be weird. Just use their phone. You know, it's not really beige boxing unless you're outside of somebody's house that you don't know, like in their bushes or something, and you've plugged into their phone lines and you're making fraudulent calls. Hello, Brad. Beautiful man. Beautiful brother. Hello. Uh, I was just wanted to put this out there. Okay. Um, the, there's another problem facing this nation, sir. Uh, oh, apart great. from uh, the gun problem and the discrimination. This is problem, the guy that posts politics on the Facebook page. There's another problem that we have in this Christian nation. What's and that? that is cursing. Oh, no. Uh, it's not, not allowed. Not cursing. That does not sit right with Christ. Uh, I notice it. Every time you call someone, they always have to curse their ass off. They're always like, Oh, thank you for calling. Uh, yeah. yeah, my phone number is. You mean at this address, uh, 234 uh, Drive. And yeah, my name is. Why do they curse a lot? I don't know. They won't stop. Fuck that. Oh, They're not Christians. Sorry. Leave that out. All right, Brad. Nice talking to you. Bye. 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 Yeah, I don't get it either, but I bleep out all the cursing to protect your virgin ears. Hey, Brad. I just wanted to say that Carlito is way better than you. Hey, come on. But you put out way more shows, so I listen to you way more. So it's a tough judgment call. Mm. I love your show, man. It's really great. But Thanks. you're kind of like the side chick who puts out a lot. And Carlito is like the super hot mega babe who's wholesome and really hard to get. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to keep you on the side. So I need to stop doing as many shows as I do. And that'll make me more desirable. That's what you're saying. Advantage of your excellent show jobs. But really, I just want to get Carlito to marry me. So yeah, I love you, buddy. I mean, all the nasty stuff you do to my ears. Okay. Tomorrow. Thanks for telling me that you like Carlito more than me. Hi, Roy. I'm Sicky Mr. Pickle. Hello. Sorry about that last message. I actually kind of hate talking on the phone, even if it's to a robotic voicemail type machine. I haven't heard it yet, but I see you left but a message But thank you for your show today. Before. It was great. Uh, You're sorry welcome. Sorry for swearing in your chat room. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to say the fuck word in it's front of okay. all those innocent people. Yeah. I know this is a family-friendly show. It's a real problem these days. we only tell babies and women and children to please shut the fuck up. Yep. It was a great experience. It was my first live thing, and yours and uh, XYZ shows are both great. I need to do it more. I need to just quit my job and not be at work all day and missing shows all the time, so I just suck and listen to this shit. Yeah, so, that's what you should do. I appreciate it, Ron. You're welcome. I my donation of $5.01 just so I can quit my job and accumulate enough wealth over time to wow. quit my job Thanks. and use that money to pay off my weekly debt and pay off my rent where I get free water every day. Okay, bye. Bye. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. You're upping your pledge so you can quit your job? What? Hey, Army. I'm sure you've been whistled at before, but just in case you don't know, I was a telemarketer for two or two and a half years, somewhere around there, for Allstate Insurance, and I got whistled at three or four times. And immediately what happens is their microphone cuts down, bang, and you can barely even hear the whistling. You, it, the whistling is not even as loud as a conversation, you know, dialogue between the person on the phone. Maybe the whistling was, you know, maybe it worked better to get back at prank callers back in the day, like back in the 60s and 70s, where there wasn't a system in place to lower the volume on things. Maybe. Immediately Just cut the microphone down. And at the office I worked at personally, uh, if, if somehow their microphone doesn't kick down, then bang, it, uh, it'll automatically lower the frequency or whatever they do to it. Um, there's, a, there's a cap on how loud your headset can be. Um, because obviously, uh, people who run a telemarketing office know that that's a problem, that people carry with them right next to their telephones. I did a bunch of telemarketing in the 90s, and I never got whistled at. Just in case of telemarketer. So, they don't want to hurt their employees' ears and uh, <laughs> I... potentially get sued, even if they know they're going to win. So, 
you know, go cap it. All right, yeah, I just thought you might want to know. It's a little fun phone fact yeah. that nobody gives a shit about until I just brought it up. Duh. Now, everybody knows. And yeah, maybe the whistling thing is just an old-fashioned thing to do that worked better a few decades ago but doesn't work so great these days because we've got these tiny little speakers on our cell phones now. Back when we all had rotary phones, it was a big speaker in the handset that could actually get pretty loud, but still probably not as loud for the person doing the pranking. The person blowing the whistle, they're going to get the worst of it. Hey, Brad, it's uh, Pussy Slap. Hey. Hey, I was listening to episode 451, the latest episode. That's great. <laughs> Uh, the uh, guy called back from the maintenance, and the uh, uh, you were telling you told no the, the manager was in the background too, and you told her to tell her to shut up. And oh, she was, that and guy, yeah. Very, 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 very quietly. She goes, huh? yep. "Dude, that was fucking <laughs> priceless." Man. I that heard that. Shit. <laughs> oh man, it was good stuff. I don't think I heard that when I was doing the call, but like later when I did the editing. I heard it that time. Uh, anyways, I want to do a shameless plug. The maintenance guy seemed amused, but uncomfortable, since she was standing right there. Uh, everybody, come listen to Pussy Slap Workshop. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of episodes out right now, uh, but I've got Dragon Mirror on with me, man. We're doing some good stuff, so uh, you guys come over to Pussy Slap Workshop. Uh, we do a Mixer Live. Sometimes we do, like, pre-recorded shows when we play them live, but uh, it's currently in the progress, so you guys come take a listen. Uh, love you guys. Thanks, Brad. Bye. So that's the name of the channel, Mixler.com slash Pussy Slap Workshop, page not found. I don't know, maybe if you put it in the search bar, it'll pull up that way. Hey, Brad, it's Crimson. Hello. So I don't think you understood my last voicemail. Probably and, not. Uh, I enjoyed your reaction. You, you reacted perfectly to my uh, dream about uh, Mistress Morgan and all the stuff that was hilarious. Thanks. Uh, anyway, um... Uh, uh, earnings call. That's what I was going to say. Oh, God. Sorry. Your time's almost uh, up. Earnings call. Earnings calls happen every quarter. Every publicly traded company has to have an earnings call where investors get to call in to ask their very important questions. The good thing for us is the CEO has to be on the call pretty much. <laughs> Yet, a lot of the smaller companies uh, have like one caller, if that. And the other good thing is that uh, usually all the earnings calls all they ask is, uh, you know, what what is the name of your business, if any? And you can just say you're an individual investor. And okay. uh, hey, you get to get on a live call with the I'll you know, write this all down. You want. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was trying to get. It'll totally what happen. Call publicly traded companies. Okay. And the second thing I wanted to say is uh, oh. that I was watching iDubs do bad unboxing. And it reminded me, uh, you know, you were saying that, like, you didn't want to give out your mailing address on air because people are sending you stupid shit. Yep. Well, never that's ends. Bad. You can embrace it. Just embrace it. Let's no. have some videos online where you comically unbox all the stupid stuff that people said to you. Yeah. And then, like, you yeah, know, that won't cause tons more of it. it. Or, like, kind of have a laugh. Whatever. It's entertaining either way. All right. Thanks a lot. That's to me. It was seriously getting out of hand. I actually set all my unboxing videos to private because it was just getting Hello, so bad. Mr. Bellavich, this is Vladimir Putin. I would Hello. first like to make lame suggestion about the next calls you should make, like your other retarded voicemail callers. You know, they say hey, you can't say the like R word. I, hey, well, not allowed anymore. Something like this, blah, 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 boring, boring. Yeah, take that and shove it up your ass. Next, uh, Timothy Hansonovich would like to say your voicemail callers are basically borderline retarded. Hey. And uh, you can suck his nuts at. I guess that's Call true, back though. Ah, what are you doing? Can't give out numbers. Looks like that is the last voicemail, so that's the end of today's show. Thanks, everyone, for calling in with voicemails, and thank you, Sean L., for sponsoring today's show. If you want to support the show, please do that at patreon.com slash phone losers. Whenever you support the show, you get instant access to, I think, 95 episodes now. Secret shows that you hopefully can't hear anywhere else. 95 of them, that's probably like 40 or 50 hours of extra material that you get instant access to. Let's end today's show with some Rappy McRapperson. Here's something from Live at the Amway Arena. Amway Arena! Me and my grandma went to prison together! Best friends forever! Me and my grandma went to prison together. Best friends forever. 
Me and my grandma did it, we did the crime So together, we gotta do the time Buck naked in line at the prison admissions Welcome to hell, grandma cries and I yell Wake the fuck up grandma, we're in prison Survival is a mission, think with precision We gotta survive, learn to stay alive Join a prison gang for protection so we don't die Why are we getting tattoos on our foreheads? Cause in a prison gang, you gotta follow orders Gotta survive, learn to stay alive After a few months, it was easy time We lift weights together, play dominoes Gambling for six and the TV remote In our bunk in the cell, grandma gets the top A smooch good night when the lights go out Me and my grandma, together in prison Praise the prisms, crystals, wisdom, lockdown Sweaty mayor of a hot town Corruption, death, destruction The walls are crumbly, my stomach's grumbly The prison butthole weed gets us all mumbly Praise Jay humbly through all the strife me and my grandma in prison for life Me and my grandma went to prison together Best friends forever Me and my grandma went to prison together Best friends forever Me and my grandma went to prison together Best friends forever Me and my grandma went to prison together Best friends forever Survival is the mission with precision this isn't faggot county jail bitch this is prison grandma's got the vision we gotta get a hustle me i got the muscle ready to rustle snickers and ruffles heroin hustles a pound of heroin in my grandma's stretchy butthole poop it out let's make some money there's money on the yard don't be a retard and it's so pretty crooked mayor of a cold city me and my grandma in prison and it's so gritty we run this shit like master blaster she sits on my shoulders and gives me the orders bricks and mortar barbed wire fences life sentence plaintiffs defendants wake up we're in prison grandma and lights out can i get a hand job yeah. me and my grandma went to prison together best friends forever me and my grandma went to prison together best friends forever me and my grandma went to prison together best friends forever me and my grandma went to prison together best friends forever Amway Arena this is Mr. Biggs from the Stick It With Mr. Biggs podcast if you want to learn more about what you heard in today's episode of The Snowplow Show, take a trip to your local library. It's all in books. 